is Friday the 15th of March, and Sunday will be focused on Lent. But uh, if it were on any other day of the week, we'd be focused more on St. Patrick. So why don't we pray his breastplate, a portion of it, heading into the weekend. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I arise today through a mighty strength, the invocation of the Trinity, through belief in the threeness, through confession of the oneness of the Creator of creation. I arise today through the strength of Christ's birth with his baptism, through the strength of his crucifixion with his burial, through the strength of his resurrection with his ascension, through the, descent, through the strength of his descent for the judgment of doom. I arise today through the strength of the love of cherubim, the obedience of angels, the service of archangels, and the hope of resurrection to meet with reward. I arise today through a mighty strength of the invocation of the Trinity, through belief in the threeness, through confession of the oneness of the creator of creation. Amen. St. Patrick, pray for us. You know, you might flip around the dial a little bit, you know, over this weekend and hear a lot of people mention St. Patrick's Day and stuff, but uh, I don't know if anybody else little out there on other parts of this radio dial are going to be praying the breastplate. It's a great prayer. I got the whole text of it linked at sunrisemorningshow.com if you want to check it out. Up this hour, there's lots to get to. I'm Matt Swaim. Anna Mitchell has news. Paul Lockman at the controls. Travis has a video feed up and running at sunrisemorningshow.com. I'm wearing my St. Patrick's shirt today if you want to check it out uh, on the video feed. Stephanie Mann will discuss another saint, St. Saint Thomas More, and some more of his thoughts on Lent. Dr. Benjamin Lewis from the International Commission on English and the Liturgy, we'll talk about a translation of a Lenten hymn that shows up in morning prayer on Sundays in Lent. We'll talk to Ken Craycraft, our legal and political correspondent, uh, more stuff on his book, Citizens Yet Strangers. And then Father Hezekiah Carnazzo will look ahead to the Sunday Mass readings. So, hope you can join us. Right now it is two minutes past. Here's Anna Mitchell with news. Good morning. Severe weather slammed a number of states yesterday with reports of tornadoes in Indiana, Kentucky, and Ohio. In Indiana, there were earlier reports of at least three deaths, but officials are now saying that might not be the case. Authorities said in an overnight press conference that they're still working to confirm if weather led to any deaths, acknowledging at the same time that some people could still be trapped inside buildings. The Italian newspaper Corriera della Sera release, has released several passages from Pope Francis's new autobiographical book entitled Life, My Story in History. From Vatican Radio, Devin Watkins reports. The Italian newspaper Corriere della Sera has released several passages from Pope Francis's new autobiographical book entitled Life, My Story in History. Written with Vatican journalist Fabio Marchese Ragona, the book is set to be released on March 19th by HarperCollins. In the passages released on Thursday, the Pope clarified that were he to resign, he would not choose to be called Pope Emeritus, but simply Bishop Emeritus of Rome. In that case, he would live in the Basilica of St. Mary Major to return to being a confessor and bring communion to the sick. The Pope emphasized that it is a distant hypothesis because there are no serious reasons to consider the possibility, which he said he never considers despite moments of difficulty. There are no conditions for a resignation, according to Pope Francis, unless a serious physical impediment arises. The book spans over 300 pages and covers all aspects of Pope Francis's life, from his relationship with his family, especially with his grandparents, their immigration to Argentina in 1929, a little derailment during his seminary period, and World War II with its dramatic atomic epilogue. The pages traverse the history of the Argentine dictatorship, the deep connections that Jorge Mario Bergoglio had with those who did not survive it, and his commitment to sheltering young people at risk during the autocratic regime. The book continues through the Pope's staunch defense of human life from conception to natural death, calling abortion murder carried out by a hired killer and the practice of surrogacy as inhumane. The book also includes a chapter on soccer, Bergoglio's passion, writing about Maradona and the Pope's vow to no longer watch TV. Pope Francis also reflected on the resignation of Pope Benedict XVI and their relationship. He said he felt pain to watch the Pope Emeritus be instrumentalized for ideological purposes. The ten years that followed included controversy, said Pope Francis, which hurt both of us. 
I'm Devin Watkins. Vice President Kamala Harris has spoken out against lawmakers who have passed laws restricting abortion across the country. Harris toured a Planned Parenthood clinic in Minneapolis yesterday, becoming the first vice president to ever visit a clinic providing abortion while in office. The vice president claimed many women across the country, she said, are suffering following the Supreme Court's decision to overturn Roe v. Wade. The White House is trying to make abortion a key issue running up to the general election. President Biden, in his State of the Union address, vowed to restore abortion protections if he's reelected and Democrats take both chambers of Congress in November. The Michigan father charged in connection with a deadly school shooting carried out by his teenage son is being found guilty. James Crumley was found guilty on four counts of involuntary manslaughter in the deaths of four students at Oxford High School in 2021. The shooter's mother, Jennifer Crumley, has already been found guilty on the same charges. Prosecutors say the Crumleys turned a blind eye to their son's mental problems and left the gun used in the crime unsecured. Former Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin is putting together a bid to buy TikTok. Mark Mayfield has more. He told CNBC on Thursday that he is building an investor group to acquire the popular video app from ByteDance. This comes after the House voted Wednesday to approve a bill that would force the China-based company to sell the app or have the app banned in the U.S. Mnuchin said he thinks the legislation should pass and that TikTok should be owned by a U.S. business. He added there's no way that the Chinese would ever let a U.S. company own something like this in China. I'm Mark Mayfield. And the Washington Commanders are trading away their starting quarterback from last season. Washington is sending QB Sam Howell, a fourth-round pick, and a sixth-rounder to Seattle in exchange for a third-round pick and a fifth-rounder in this year's draft. Howell is expected to be the top backup behind starting quarterback Geno Smith next season. Very yeah. interesting, huh, Matt? I would think so. I think so. You, you think know, they're going to uh, draft a quarterback? Uh, well, they've got, I think, the number two pick. Yeah. And there's all this what question about— What does that tell you? There's this Caleb Williams is going to be in the mm-hmm. mix, or is he? Drake May mm-hmm. could be in the mix. Jaden Daniels could be in the mix. But the, uh, the Bears got that top pick, and uh, your buddy Justin Fields, you know, there's this—there's there's questions, right? Yeah. about how that whole thing is going to play out. But uh, I will say this. Caleb Williams is a, a D.C. area guy hmm. who went to Gonzaga High School mm-hmm. and talked about how grateful he was for his Jesuit formation. Oh, that's cool. When he was uh, in all those Heisman talks. A man So if others. he came back to here, there would be people who saw him in high school who'd be real excited to see him. Yeah. Speaking of real excited to see people, I am real excited to see you in your 90s punk look with the uh, oh, open button it's shirt. More grungy and the, than uh, punk. is that what it is? Is it yeah, grungy? It's more early 90s grunge than oh, okay, late 90s sure. emo, if that's what you're trying to say. Yeah. No, I got my, uh, so St. Patrick and Rita Heikenfeld pointed this out a couple of um, segments ago. Uh, everybody says the color of St. Patrick is green, but his actual color he was originally associated with was blue. Mm-hmm. So I've got my St. Patrick shirt with the breastplate of St. Mm-hmm. Patrick on it, but I'm wearing like a blue plaid shirt. Okay, my my question is, though, why would your shirt – I'm looking at your shirt. Folks watching the video stream will see this. So, I mean, it's neat that you have the breastplate written right there like on the front of it, but don't you think Christ behind me should be on your back? On the back of the shirt? Mm. And actually, I should be wearing a, a hat that says Christ above me. Yeah. And a pair of, like, socks. Chuck Taylors that say yeah. Christ beneath me. Do you have St. Patrick's socks? Uh, I actually do not. You have those, like, socks. one of the sock few religious. saints I don't have socks of. My father in law got Will some St. Patrick's socks. Oh, nice. And yeah, Roma, for that matter. Of course, your husband playing a bunch of Irish stuff this week. Yeah, we weekend. got a busy weekend. Yeah. Or, well, he does. I guess your I have a busy being weekend being, we, I call myself a band widow. Those uh, weekends. St. Patrick's Day weekend, you're all. Yeah, I'm not going to see Will much this weekend. It's true. In true Irish fashion. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. St. Patrick, pray for us. us. Well, today is Friday, March the 15th, and we are happy to have you along with us here on the Sunrise Morning Show on EWTN Radio. It's 10 past. 
Back with us now on the Sunrise Morning Show is Stephanie Mann. You can go read her blog. It's excellent. Supremacyandsurvival.blogspot.com. Good morning, Stephanie. Good morning, Anna. Thank you very much. You bet. So uh, we are continuing sure. our Lenten mini-series yes. on St. Thomas More's Godly Meditation, which listeners uh, was inspired from a couple of entries in Father Henry Sebastian Bowden's Mementos of the English right. Martyrs and Confessors. Today we're going to be picking up with a part of the meditation which focuses, I guess you could say, on the four last things. Could you read the excerpt that okay. we'll be discussing? Sure, yes. Give me thy grace, good Lord, to know my own ability and wretchedness, to humble and meeken myself under the mighty hand of God, to bewail my sins past, for the purging of them patiently to suffer adversity, gladly to bear my purgatory here, to be joyful of tribulations, to walk the narrow way that leadeth to life, to bear the cross with Christ, to have the last thing in remembrance, to have ever afore mine eyes, my eye the death that is ever at hand to make death no stranger to me to foresee and consider the everlasting fire of hell mm. you know it seems clear to me from that passage particularly yes. that this man is sitting in prison knowing that death is near when he writes this yes. i mean honestly yes. stephanie mm -hmm. if i have the grace to know that my death is near I hope my meditation is simpler. Yes, yeah, I, I think that's true. And, and and I think also we are called as, as a Catholic tradition as you know, it's been right from the time of St. Jerome, those who meditated on on the fact that we each of us is going to die. We know mm -hmm. it is true. We don't know when, but we know it is true. And we're often told that we should be prepared for our death. We don't want an unprovided for death, I think is one of the terms that's used. We want to be able to uh, at least have a priest by our side or at least someone praying with us so that yes. we don't die without those without the sacraments of the church we don't want to to be caught unawares of our death but yes thomas more is really he has seen it right before him and in some ways i think we're often called to remind ourselves of that that we don't know the day or the hour and therefore we want to be prepared and he is preparing by in his situation and, and i think this could be true for us even in Lent. that's part of what we do is to think of the ways that we have failed repent of them and then make that restitution that we need to make to god for the temporal effects of those sins so that we can say that when when we die we will meet merrily in heaven as thomas yes. Moore would say with all our all those who have gone before us and are there and so Yes, I think he, he is he is really focused on this, but he shows us a way to focus on it, too. Although I do think he, he kind of skimps on heaven and he looks for <laughs> hell. But still, he, he knows what the four last things are. Death, judgment, yes. heaven, and hell. And he is pre help preparing for them. And I think he gives us some guidance on how to prepare for them, too. I absolutely agree. I mean, I was going to say it's also clear to me that he certainly... This certainly was not the first time that he was meditating True. on the four last things. And that's not just because your very helpful blog post lists them out for me. I mean, it is right. clear that this man has meditated on the four last things quite a bit throughout his yes. life. Can you talk about that? Yes. Well, he. we know that he wrote, in fact, it was an exercise that he did with his dear daughter Margaret uh, a started to work on a uh, shared reflection on the four last things and he concentrated on death and when he concentrated on death he said that to, to think of our death is a time to think about the vices and the virtues and to think about the virtues we want to the vices we want to avoid and the virtues we want to in, inculcate it's incomplete but we know it is there we also know that he spent usually uh, time in meditation on Fridays at his home in Chelsea to prepare for this, uh, for for his uh, eventual death. He had been ill for, for some time before he went into the tower, even with some heart conditions. But mm -hmm. he was in many ways prepared in this. And so, yes, this you could say that this focused him. But yes, this has been part of his life, thinking of death yeah. and thinking of the four last things. 
I'm so struck by these lines to bewail my sins past for the purging of them patiently to suffer adversity. Okay, so suffering, yes. suffering patiently. Okay, great. But then he says, yes. gladly to bear my purgatory here to be joyful of tribulations. Yes. I mean, what a statement from from someone. I mean. I like to quote Father Hezekiah's Carnazzo when he says yeah, sure. that you, you have to be a martyr before you're a martyr or you won't be a martyr yes. when you're martyred. Uh, this is a man who was a martyr prior to being martyred. Yes. And he, like, as you say, those those two words that kind of stick out are, are to be joyful and to be glad, yeah. <laughs> to, to uh, be able to make reparation for past sins and to be prepared in that way so that he can go to heaven. So he is, again, that meditation and to, to find joy and gladness in the midst of adversity and suffering. And it was interesting yesterday, my, the, the our parochial vicar pointed out that, that we, we are strange in a strange way in the midst of let and especially with Latari Sunday, we are to rejoice. We are to find joy, even in the midst of, this, as we sometimes call it, valley of tears, because we know who has won the battle. Jesus has won the battle. He has won. He has given us uh, the hope of resurrection and eternal life with with uh, the tr Holy Trinity in heaven. So he has that looking forward. Maybe it is hard to go through the suffering now, but to ha think of it in a joyful and glad way is, is a, again, a remarkable transformation that more i think thomas more made and that in this prayer he gives us insights into how we could make it and so yeah. it's it's a, a difficult thing but it it is a a path for the christian life to have that joy in the midst of suffering yeah as you speak i i think of um i've never been there personally but thinking of a video image of the church of the holy sepulcher and you have the tomb there and you think about yes. like that's the place where the dead body of Jesus was laid, but that's also where the resurrection happened. Resurrection occurred, yes. It's an incredible yeah, thought. It's a, because it's an empty tomb. Because it's an empty tomb. Yes. yes, yes, absolutely. Some beautiful, beautiful meditations here from Stephanie Mann on a beautiful meditation by St. Thomas More. And you can read more about it at Stephanie's blog. Go to Supremacy and Survival blogspot.com it's linked at sunrise morning show.com in the show notes for today stephanie thank you so God much God bless you you too stephanie thank you we're back with headlines right after this it's 18 past are you looking for peace longing for joy want to meet the giver of all goodness god is calling the laity to bring ignatian prayer into a suffering world work for the new evangelization go to lord teach me to pray.com Order your free digital training and manual. Find true happiness and everlasting joy. Go to LordTeachMeToPray.com and click on the red button today. It's free. Approved by the USCCB. For more than 150 years, the Comboni missionaries have served the poorest and most forgotten people. With our founder, St. Daniel Comboni, as an inspiration, we work for the full development of the human person through evangelization, education, and advocacy. Your donations make a huge impact, and 95% are used to fund our many projects. Find out more at kombonimissionaries.org. That is kombonimissionaries.org. The most original Catholic content is on EWTN Radio. On Mother Angelica Answering the Call, Father Joseph and Doug Keck mind decades of phone calls answered by Mother Angelica. No subject is off limits and no problem too big for the wisdom and compassion of the one and only Mother Angelica. Mother Angelica Answering the Call, Sunday afternoon, 2 Eastern on EWTN Radio. 19 past, here's Anna with headlines. Severe weather slammed several states yesterday with reports of tornadoes. An Italian newspaper has released several passages from Pope Francis's new autobiographical book, and Vice President Kamala Harris became the first sitting vice president yesterday to visit an abortion clinic. 
Hope she saw some people praying. I hope so, too. Uh, Anna Mitchell, in our show notes, you can go over to our video feed, our Facebook stream, our YouTube stream. Uh, in real time, I try and, like, make comments or answer some questions while you're talking. I know sometimes you answer things while I'm talking. Uh, but I, I got a couple questions about where I got my shirt. I did put a link to the place I got it from. Actually, it's the place that Colleen got it from. Uh, if you Colleen see buys all his clothes. The actual shirt. She doesn't buy all of them. Sometimes I, sometimes I have a say. Really? My wife does dress me a lot, but you can always tell when she, she does doesn't. Well. You can always tell when she doesn't. <laughs> 21 minutes past the hour. Starting at 7 a.m. this morning, the phone lines and our arms will be open wide, welcoming many new members into our family during Sacred Heart Radio's Lenten Membership Drive, when over three days, we'll join together and raise $120,000 to protect our right to broadcast the Catholic viewpoint and the gospel of Jesus Christ over seven media platforms nonstop. So we'll talk to you and everyone you told about Sacred Heart Radio starting at 7 this morning, and welcome to the family. Hi, I'm Anna Mitchell, MC for Heartbeats for Life 5K, sponsored by Cincinnati Right to Life, Saturday, April 20th at Lunkin Airport Playfield. It's a day of food, family, and fun to keep hearts beating in Ohio. Register at CincinnatiRightToLife.org. Support for the Sunrise Morning Show is from Visiting Angels. Visiting Angels provides experienced, compassionate care to millions of aging adults nationwide by keeping them safe and healthy in the comfort of their own home. Whether it's a short break for caregivers or for long-term assistance, Visiting Angels provides hygiene, meals, light housework, companionship, and more. And services are available up to 24 hours per day. Visiting Angels, online at visitingangels.com. That's visitingangels.com. Franchise opportunities available. I am Guy Cagney with the Cagney Family and Coble Banker Realty. The Cagney family supports Sacred Heart Radio and wants you to know that we can help you with all your real estate needs in Ohio, Kentucky, Indiana, and Florida. 513-347-1888. Support for Sacred Heart Radio is from St. Michael's Rosaries and Religious Articles in Miamisburg. Featuring beautiful custom rosaries and thoughtful Christ-centered gifts for weddings, priestly ordinations, and any occasion. 937-530-8026. 937-530-8026. Support for Sacred Heart Radio is from Molly Maid of Westchester. Insured, screened, and drug-free employees deliver service with a 100% satisfaction guarantee. 1-800-MOLLY-MAID or at mollymaid.com. Molly Maid, a clean you can trust. The Sunrise Morning Show continues. I'm Matt Swain. It's always great to catch up with Dr. Benjamin Lewis from the International Commission on English in the liturgy to uh, figure out some of the projects he's been working on. Maybe draw our attention to some hymns that we might have glossed over before. Dr. Lewis, good morning. Good morning, Matt. How are you? So we've been doing a lot with these morning hymns and these morning prayers, which is, you know, makes a lot of sense because this is morning radio. Uh, But also is kind of cool because, you know, perhaps some of the people listening right now have come across these in their morning prayers and might want to take a deeper look. Let's talk about the hymn for Sundays in Lent and uh, what the the sort of uh, the before and after picture looks like with it. Sure. Well, if you if you open up your current liturgy of the hours, you'll there's just a section for all of Lent that doesn't differentiate between Sundays and weekdays, and you have lots of different options for your morning prayer hymn for Lent prior to Holy Week. And you actually, um, the, the text that, we, that we're going to look at today in, in translation is actually provided for you uh, in Latin without a translation it, at the very, very bottom of your list of options currently for morning prayer hymns. So somebody is so probably you... scrambling for that right now <laughs> so they can follow along to see how you translated it. Yeah, so if, if most people probably haven't noticed it because if you go to the first option, praise to the holiest in the height, you might go for that, or if that looks a little too unfamiliar, you might go to the next option, which is the glory of these 40 days, and you might go, oh, I know that one. Sure, we'll, we'll sing that one. Um, and then you've got two other English options after that, and then the very last two uh, options for morning prayer hymns are two Latin texts. The first one is the, the text that the church actually proposes for Sundays during Lent, uh, and the second one is the text that the church proposes in Latin for weekdays during Lent. 
So we talked about the that uh, that final one last week as the as the weekday morning prayer hymn. But I thought we would talk about the the penultimate one um, that's listed there currently because we never translated it. It's just there in the Latin "Procemur omnes cernui," and there's no there's no information about the melody or who wrote this text. It's just there's a bunch of Latin. If you're bold enough to try to to recite Wait, or sing so that. So you're saying that the that ISIL hasn't done an official translation of this yet, so we might hear you try it on the fly. <laughs> no, no, no. What I'm saying is if you if you go to the, the printed liturgy of the hours you, currently, there's you won't no see it now, right. I thought but, maybe you um, were gonna put you on the spot. <laughs> no, so. no, I'm not gonna be doing any site translation on the radio. Um, but this is we have gone through all of these hymns in Latin and translated them um, from the from the text that's proposed. Um, so you can you can find this translation out there. I'm not just making it up on the spot. But this is if you go out and purchase the new uh, Divine Office hymnal uh, and when the new Liturgy of the Hours comes out, this is the translation you will finally get for this text for uh, Sundays in Lent. So let's hear it then. Let all of us bow down in prayer. Let each with sorrow raise a cry and let us weep before the judge forestalling his avenging wrath. O God, our faults and evil deeds offend your loving clemency. Pour forth upon us from above forgiveness and remission, Lord. Remember, we belong to you, formed by your hand, yet prone to fall. Do not bestow, O Lord, we pray, on others honor due your name. Forgive the evil we have done, increase the good for which we pray, by which we may be fit at last to please you here and evermore. Grant us, O blessed Trinity, O undivided unity, to see this service of our fast bring forth your fruit within our hearts. Amen. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, that's, uh, it actually uh, sounds... There, there are a lot of tones of that that uh, that came up when we were talking about the weekday uh, mm -hmm. louts hymn, but it strikes me that that'd be the kind of thing worth printing out and praying before or after confession as well. Sure, yeah. I, the thing that strikes me about it is it's it's a beautiful balance of in in stanza one we reference God as judge and how we have to weep before Him and forestall His avenging wrath, but then we move right into stanza two where we're talking about His loving clemency and asking him to pour forth forgiveness and remission. So there's this beautiful balance of, yes, uh, God is a judge, but he's also loving, um, yeah. and he's, al he's also forgiving. Well, and there's a line in there uh, towards the, 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 the last half of it that really struck me about, you know, asking God to remember that he made us, right? Remember you made us, <laughs> <laughs> after all. It, stri it strikes me as a similar in tone to the prayer that we pray in the Mass, you know, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. You know, yeah. that 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 request to say, God, you know, we know that we've messed up, but we also know that you made us out of love, yeah. and we're kind of making an appeal to that. Yeah, and it, it's it's funny you mention that because the 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 the, the word there in Latin is plasmatis. Um, so the idea is that God formed us by his hand. It, it recalls this imagery of clay being shaped and molded. So it, it recalls all those biblical passages about he is the potter and I'm the mm -hmm. clay and the whole idea of, of Adam uh, being formed from the ground. So it really captures this, this very biblical sense of God, God isn't just some kind of passive, um, distant creator. He's actually, he's molded us and shaped us like a potter. Now you're um, making me want to go back to the readings for the second scrutiny and uh, figure out what word was used for what it was that Jesus spat and made and rubbed on that guy's eyes and if there's any connection there because, you know, it's fascinating. Uh, the, yeah. These word connections um, with potter and clay and dust and forming and all that stuff. So, uh, Dr. Lewis, if our listeners want to get the uh, new uh, Divine Office hymnal, which includes texts like the ones you just shared uh, this morning, how do they do so? It's being published by GIA Music as the Divine Office Hymnal, and you can order it online. You can find that link at sunrisemorningshow.com. While you're there, hit donate. Help us with our Lenten membership drive. 
Half past the hour, here's Anna Mitchell with news. Good morning. Severe weather has taken a toll on a number of states with reports of tornadoes yesterday in Indiana, Kentucky, and Ohio. In Indiana, there were earlier reports of at least three deaths, but officials are now saying that might not be the case. Authorities said in an overnight press conference that they're still working to confirm if the weather led to any deaths, acknowledging at the same time that people could still be trapped inside of buildings. The Italian newspaper Corriere della Sera released several passages from Pope Francis's new autobiographical book entitled Life, My Story in History. From Vatican Radio, Devin Watkins reports. Written with Vatican journalist Fabio Marchese Ragona, the book is set to be released on March 19th by HarperCollins. In the passages released on Thursday, the Pope clarified that were he to resign, he would not choose to be called Pope Emeritus, but simply Bishop Emeritus of Rome. In that case, he would live in the Basilica of St. Mary Major to return to being a confessor and bring communion to the sick. The Pope emphasized that it is a distant hypothesis because there are no serious reasons to consider the possibility, which he said he never considers despite moments of difficulty. There are no conditions for a resignation, according to Pope Francis, unless a serious physical impediment arises. The book spans over 300 pages and covers all aspects of Pope Francis's life, from his relationship with his family, especially with his grandparents, their immigration to Argentina in 1929, a little derailment during his seminary period, and World War II with its dramatic atomic epilogue. The pages traverse the history of the Argentine dictatorship, the deep connections that Jorge Mario Bergoglio had with those who did not survive it, and his commitment to sheltering young people at risk during the autocratic regime. The book continues through the Pope's staunch defense of human life from conception to natural death, calling abortion murder carried out by a hired killer and the practice of surrogacy as inhumane. The book also includes a chapter on soccer, Bergoglio's passion, writing about Maradona and the Pope's vow to no longer watch TV. Pope Francis also reflected on the resignation of Pope Benedict XVI and their relationship. He said he felt pain to watch the Pope Emeritus be instrumentalized for ideological purposes. The ten years that followed included controversy, said Pope Francis, which hurt both of us. I'm Devin Watkins. Vice President Kamala Harris has praised abortion providers and lashed out against lawmakers who have restricted abortion across the country. The Catholic News Agency reports Harris toured a Planned Parenthood clinic in Minneapolis yesterday, becoming the first vice president ever to visit a clinic providing abortion while in office. She claimed that many women across the country are suffering following the overturning of Roe v. Wade. She said, quote, how dare these elected officials believe they are in a better position to tell women what they need, to tell women what is in their best interest. She said, in this environment, these attacks against an individual's right to make Decisions about their own body are outrageous and, in many instances, just plain old immoral, end quote. Meanwhile, Harris will be hosting the Biden administration's first public event on marijuana reform, which takes place later today. Harris will be hosting a roundtable discussion on a topic on the topic with Grammy-nominated rapper Fat Joe, Kentucky's Democratic governor Andy Bashir and individuals who have received pardons for prior cannabis convictions. The roundtable comes after Biden spoke about, quote, directing his cabinet to review the federal classification of marijuana, end quote. Former Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin is putting together a bid to buy TikTok. Mark Mayfield reports. He told CNBC on Thursday that he is building an investor group to acquire the popular video app from ByteDance. This comes after the House voted Wednesday to approve a bill that would force the China-based company to sell the app or have the app banned in the U.S. Mnuchin said he thinks the legislation should pass and that TikTok should be owned by a U.S. business. He added there's no way that the Chinese would ever let a U.S. company own something like this in China. I'm Mark Mayfield. The Michigan father charged in connection with a deadly high school shooting carried out by his teenage son is being found guilty. James Crumbly was found guilty on four counts of involuntary manslaughter. That's the news on the Sunrise Morning Show. It's 35 minutes past the hour. Put your money where your heart is 
do business with someone who shares your faith and values from Sacred Heart Radio's Angels List of Underwriters. And don't forget to tell them where you found out about them. Go to sacredheartradio.com and click Angels List. This is Chris Knockelman, owner of Schneller Knockelman Plumbing, Heating, and Air. Our family has been a proud supporter of Sacred Heart Radio for more than a decade, and we encourage other businesses to do the same. Find us at skpha.com, skpha.com. Support for Sacred Heart Radio is from Hoting Realtors. The current real estate market is challenging, but the professionals at Hoting Realtors are equipped with the market knowledge and tools needed to make home buying and selling easier. 513-451-4800 and at Hoting.com. Support for Sacred Heart Radio is from Rose Automotive, serving the Hamilton area with a wide selection of pre-owned cars, trucks, and SUVs. Rose Automotive, celebrating over 30 years of automotive excellence. On Erie Highway in Hamilton. RoseAutomotiveGroup.com. It's 24 minutes before the hour on this final day of Sacred Heart Radio's Lenten Membership Drive. Give us a call at 513-731-7740 or donate online at SacredHeartRadio.com. Your forecast is brought to you by Schneller Knockelman Plumbing, Heating, and Air online at SKPHA.com. Some morning showers today in Cincinnati, otherwise mostly cloudy skies with a high of 60 degrees. Partly cloudy tonight with an overnight low of 39. For the Miami Valley-Dayton area, morning showers and then otherwise cloudy today with a high of 55. Partly cloudy tonight and an overnight low of 38. We need your help to reach that $120,000 goal during our membership drive today. Give us a call, 513-731-7740, online at sacredheartradio.com or Venmo at Sacred Heart Radio. And thanks. It's 37 minutes past the hour. You're listening to the Sunrise Morning Show on the EWTN Global Catholic Radio Network. Sunrise Morning Show legal and political analyst Ken Craycraft is back with us now. He's a professor at Mount St. Mary's Seminary. He writes for the Catholic Telegraph and our Sunday visitor. And we are going to be starting a series on his new book, Citizens Yet Strangers Living Authentically Catholic in a Divided America. Ken, good morning. Good morning, Annie. Good to be with you and, and happy to uh, discuss this book after yeah. uh, all this anticipation. I know. I'm super pumped. I feel like I just saw you, though. <laughs> it does seem like that, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah, we had a, had a successful hour uh, uh, on the membership uh, and pledge drive yesterday, and uh, that will continue today, of course, in the local hours. But yeah, that was a lot of fun. Yeah, and uh, if uh, any listeners are interested, we have a couple of copies of Ken's book, Citizens Yet Strangers, signed copies available. Um, we're asking for a $250 donation. We've got a couple of copies left if uh, anyone wants to get in on that, just write book in the comments at the uh, donate page when you donate at sunrisemorningshow.com. Now, Ken, let's uh, launch in to this book with the opening lines of chapter one, in which you write, <laughs> Catholics in the United States today are liberal Protestants before we are anything else. To form our moral lives as Catholics is a constant battle to overcome the liberal Protestantism that we began to consume with our mother's milk. Now, when you say liberalism, you don't mean like left-leaning politics. We've talked about that before, but, but basically basing everything political on the foundation of individual rights. What is the Protestant anthropology behind that foundation? That that Protestant anthropology is what I, as I call it in the book, Annie, um, liberalism begins with uh, with an individual with individualism and volunteerism, and which is just, and private morality. Protestantism is liberalism applied to ecclesiological or ecclesiastical ideas, and so and and so you take that volunteerism and that um, in those individual rights. And then, and especially the, the notion of the voluntary church. So, because in in liberal in classical liberalism, there are no natural human communities, and certainly there are no supernatural human communities. So, since there are no natural communities, all community associations are merely conventional. That includes family, marriage, 
and in any other kind of association. And we really see this playing out in American public life today in, in, in a way that, that really makes the book even more uh, acute for, uh, for analyzing our current dilemma. Applied to the church then, the church is nothing other than another voluntary association. And as a matter of fact, um, John Locke, the great uh, individual rights uh, theorist from the 16th century and the, the founder of the kind of uh, liberalism and Protestantism that we practice in the United States today, specifically called the church a voluntary organization. And he didn't differentiate it from any other kind of organization from, you know, Kiwanis Club or Lions Club or or the neighborhood reading group. And what he means by that is like any other, any other association, the church is nothing other than the accumulated will of its members. The church doesn't transcend its members. It's not the universal body of Christ ex ex existing uh, through time and space, uh, and, and, but transcending them. Rather, the church is nothing other than the will of those who compose it. Literally, that's the case. So, and, and if that's the case, of course, then uh, the church changes with the wills of its members. And if a particular member doesn't like the way that a particular church operates, he or she finds another one. So um, that Protestantism is the religious term corresponding to the political term liberalism. And so as I say in the book, liberalism and Protestantism are the political and religious names that we give to that same basic moral anthropology based on individual rights, Morality is voluntary, which means that we make it up as we go along, basically, and that, and that, and that therefore morality is privatized. And when we bring that morality to the church, then what that means is, at best, the church might encourage us or make moral suggestions or give us ideas about what maybe would be the better thing for us to do, but it certainly doesn't make any purchase on our moral lives in any kind of authoritative way in the same way that real Protestants, actual Protestants, not, not we Catholics who act like them, uh, the church makes no claim. Mm -hmm. And together, those two things, liberalism and Protestantism, that really does make up the fiber of what it means to be an American. And, uh, and we Catholics have been very highly affected, infected by that. So that's why I begin the, the book with that very provocative uh, first yeah. sentence that we're liberal Protestants. Yeah, I mean, to on, on the left and the right, uh, this exactly. is a problem in in I mean we we are coming from it as from the perspective of of Catholics who live in the United States of America but I think this is probably a problem all over the world at this point um, the idea that um, I, I guess maybe could you parse this out when we look at our political opinions. We yeah. see it mm -hmm. in light of, does the church agree with me rather than uh, do I do Are I submit to the church? Yes, that and that is exactly it, Annie. You you are you're hitting the ground running because it's that that's exactly what happens, and that's what the, the entire book is all about. Precisely that problem. So what happens is, so we we look we because of because we're all liberal Protestants and because we have this privatized morality. And and let me let me qualify this for a minute, Annie. Obviously, that the the sentence is hyperbolic for the sure. purpose of getting one's attention. Absolutely. But the but the point is is that we all fight these tendencies. Even me. I mean, everybody. I mean, this is and again because we're so surrounded by this language. And I think probably next week we'll talk about how we forget our, our language and learn a new one, uh, since we really don't have time for that today. But 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 that's exactly right. So then what happens is we measure the church's teaching against our political commitments mm -hmm. rather than measuring our political commitments by the church's teaching. And 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 if the church's teaching doesn't conform to our political commitments, we do one of two things. We reject it or we refashion it in such a way that it that it that it changes to our political commitments and then at the end of the day and this is the, this is where it gets dangerous annie we begin to identify what it means to be a certain kind of political a person with what it means to be a Christian. And so and then so so in other words, if my politics are on the right end of the American liberal spectrum, that is a particularly we call a conservative, then all of my all of my uh, uh, theological commitments start to 
miraculously line up with all of the commitments of the Republican Party platform. Or if my politics uh, lean toward the left, toward demo uh, democratic policies, then, then in the same miraculous way, all of the church is teaching, look at that, it coincides with the Democratic Party platform. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, that you know that's that's a grave error, but that's exactly what begins to happen. And the reason I wrote this book, Annie, is is not not to pick on people, but rather to record my observations uh, and talking to people and reading things that this is really what's going on, and this is why it's going on. Because we begin with these basic, as I call it in the book, this basic moral anthropology of liberalism and Protestantism, and 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 even we Catholics, and when we do this. Uh, we either succumb to it or we struggle against it. And, and I wrote the book so that we can maybe, maybe start thinking about trying to find, recover a Catholic language so that we're better equipped to struggle against that Protestant, uh, uh, that liberal Protestantism that, that, again, as I say, we consume with our mother's milk. Yeah, exactly. If we're saying, well, I disagree with the church on this, well, it's not the church's problem. It's our problem. That's right. The book is called right. Citizens Yet Strangers from Our Sunday Visitor. It is linked at sunrisemorningshow.com. And Ken, looking forward to uh, diving into this more next time we get together. Thank you so much. As am I. Sounds like fun. Thanks, Annie. All right. It is 14 till Father Hezekiah Carnazzo joins us next. Central Fabricators is proud to support the Sunrise Morning Show, where you'll get news from the Catholic perspective while keeping you up to date on what's happening in the Vatican as well. It's also a great way to keep in touch with the Catholic faith throughout the week. Central Fabricators, based in Cincinnati, Ohio, is a family-owned business for over 75 years, manufacturing and repairing corrosion-resistant storage tanks, reactors, and pressure vessels. On the web at centralfabricators.com. That's centralfabricators.com. Lord, Teach Me to Pray, the Ignatian Prayer Series can now train you and others electronically to become facilitators and bring the Ignatian way of prayer to your parish. Come to know and love Jesus Christ like never before and help others do the same. Don't pass up the opportunity to join this work of the new evangelization. Go to LordTeachMeToPray.com and click on Digital Training. That's LordTeachMeToPray.com and click on Digital Training. Did you give up coffee or caffeine for Lent? Be sure to check out the tea and decaf offerings from the Mystic Monks of Wyoming. Find a link to Mystic Monk Coffee at sunrisemorningshow.com. When you make a purchase after clicking our link, we earn a commission to help support the show. The monks also have their seasonal favorite Pascha Java available for you to buy now in anticipation of your Easter Sunday feast. And why not add a Sunrise Morning Show mug to include in the Easter basket? Find those mugs and a Mystic Monk Coffee link at sonrisemorningshow.com. EWTN Radio is seeking a dynamic radio producer to join the EWTN Radio team in Irondale, Alabama. The right candidate will be a passionate, multi-skilled, talented professional who can manage and direct all aspects of producing world-class programming and play an integral part in Mother Angelica's mission. If this is you or someone you know, email a resume and cover letter, including salary requirements, to humanresources at EWTN.com. Back with us now on the Sunrise Morning Show is Father Hezekiah Carnazzo from the Institute of Catholic Culture here to preview the readings for the fifth Sunday of Lent. Father, this time next week, we're going to be talking about Palm Sunday. Can you believe I it? I know. I can't believe it. the fifth Sunday. Wow. Where the journey is coming to a conclusion. Pascha, Easter, the resurrection is before us. Yeah, but we've got some excellent uh, deep readings to get into this weekend for the fifth Sunday of Lent. And uh, the first reading this week is, I know, one of your favorite passages from Jeremiah chapter 31, particularly verse 31, Jeremiah 31, 31. The days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. Going on from there, Father, can you talk about the significance of this passage just in general, but but particularly why would why would this be an important passage to know in Lent? Sure. Well, it's extremely important because this was one of the passages that the, the Church of the Old Testament looked 
to in expectation to find out what was coming, right? And what were they to look for? And when you hear the prophet say this phrase, you're going to, you just know the days are coming. Those are clear words that indicate when the Messiah comes, this is what it's going to look like. Now he talks about a new covenant. Of course, the covenant is the joining of two people as one, right? We're talking about the marriage covenant, the man and the woman become one flesh. So this new covenant is going to draw God's people into covenant union with God. And it's going to be, it, it says, it's going to be a lasting covenant, not one that's going to be broken by the people, because it, the law of God is going to be written on the heart of God's people. It means it's not going to be written on stone like it was in the days of Moses, like we look at a uh, a stop sign or something like that, or some law written by the government. Right. Whether I'm going to follow it or not is in question. But this one is going to be the driving force of my life now. It's going to be who I am in my relationship with the Lord. Isn't that beautiful? It's so beautiful. And and something, you know, we, we talk in here a lot about the fact that you and I do this bi- this Bible study, hour-long Bible study, with the Institute of Catholic Culture on the Sunday Mass readings. And and you made this point in our Bible study for, for this upcoming fifth Sunday of Lent about how another reason why this covenant is not going to be broken is because of the two people who are entering into this covenant, which would be the yeah. Father and the Son. That's in, exactly in previous attempts of restoration of God's people and their relationship with our Heavenly Father, of course, we were the ones that walked away from the relationship like an unfaithful spouse. But in this case, the relationship is going to be established, yes, between the Father and the Son, but we can even say the relationship is established by the Son in the Son, because now the the relationship between God and man is going to be joined together in the eternal person of the Word, never more to be broken because he's in the unchanging second person of the Holy Trinity. Man and God joined together in the person of Jesus Christ. Jesus is the new covenant. It is in his flesh that the law is written because it is his will which now is walking in human flesh. It is his will which is now directing human nature. This is why Jesus is the fulfillment of the law. And in him now, the new covenant is established. And that is, by the way, by extension, the reason why our baptism is so important, because it incorporates us into this reality. Mm -hmm. I want to get to the gospel, but I can't skip the opportunity to talk about the responsorial psalm and, and Psalm 51. If we talk about writing on a piece of paper, that paper needs to be clean, right? So if God is going to write on our hearts... We need for him to create in us a clean heart, as the response tells us. Exactly. And this is our, our Lenten journey is all about this, right? Preparing our hearts for this new life which God is going to give us, a new life given, of course, to the newly baptized on, on Easter Sunday, and by extension to all of us who renew our baptismal promises and our, our renew our, our relationship with the Lord, create a clean heart. In me, O oh God, I desire this relationship with you. Write your law on my heart, because my heart is now prepared for this new life which you which you desire to give me. Absolutely. So now, looking at the gospel, John chapter twelve, it starts off by saying, "Some Greeks who had come to worship at the Passover feast came to Philip. They want to see Jesus." Philip goes to Andrew to ask him, and so they both go and tell Jesus, "Hey, these Greeks want to see you." And Jesus' answer to them is so strange to me. He says, this is what he says immediately. Jesus answered them, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Mm. What? These Greeks coming to him leads him to say his hour has come to be glorified? What is this all about, yeah. Father? Well, this is, this is many things you would say about this, but most, most important here in the Gospel of John, when we talk about the Greeks, we talk about those in the diaspora, those who are wandering, those who are lost, those who are at a far distance from the house of God. And so now the covenant restoration is taking place in the age of the Messiah, in which not only are the Jews, not only is Israel being rejoined to the king, right, and coming into the restoration of the Davidic king, but now the whole world is coming to him. This 
theme of world is so fundamentally important. It's going to come out here in this gospel when Jesus talks about the ruler of this world being cast out, it's the devil, right? Satan is being cast out. So there is a new king now established, and that which was formerly in darkness in the gospel of John, the world, is now coming to Christ as the king on the cross, which is why the second part of this, this gospel is so beautiful and so important, in which Jesus talks about whoever loves his life will lose it, and whoever hates his life in this world will preserve it. We are made for love. We are made to pour our life out for the beloved. And this is what Jesus is going to do for us on the cross. He's going to show us the depth and the breadth of his love for us. He pours his life out for us. And we are called to do this reality. What is the law of God? But God's way of life and his way of life is love. And we are called to be incorporated into this reality in which we live a life of self-giving love. That in giving of our life, in losing of our life, we actually discover what our life is all about because we are made in the image and likeness of God who is revealed to us upon the cross. Each one of us then is called to carry our cross for no one will rise from the dead who has not first died with Christ. We've been talking to Father Hezekiah Carnazzo. And Father, if listeners want to check out our Bible study at the ICC or uh, check out what's going on over there in terms of live events and the like, where can they find you? Institute of Catholic Culture. Which is linked at sunrisemorningshow.com. Thank you so much, Father Hezekiah. You're listening on EWTN. You'll be hearing the best of the Sunrise Morning Show in just a few minutes as we enter into the final day of our Lenten membership drive here at Sacred Heart Catholic Radio. If you'd like to donate, go to sacredheartradio.com and click donate. But otherwise, please pray for the success of our drive. In just a few minutes, the phone lines and our arms will be open wide, welcoming many new members into Sacred Heart Radio's family who are ready to make a sound investment to ensure that the Catholic viewpoint and the gospel of Jesus Christ will be broadcast over our seven media platforms nonstop. We're looking forward to speaking with you and everyone you told about us, so please call 513-731-7740 and let us welcome you into Sacred Heart Radio's family. Support for Sacred Heart Radio is from Twin Dental of Cincinnati. Since 1986, twin brothers Drs. David and Michael Rothen have been providing superior dental care in a relaxed and comfortable setting for the entire family. The twin dental doctors utilize advanced dentistry techniques from sedation to implants and the latest in cosmetic options to preserve and beautify smiles. Twin Dental, located just off the I-275 exit at Hamilton Avenue. For a complimentary evaluation, 513-825-6111 and online at twindental.com. For over 50 years, the St. Martin District of St. Vincent de Paul has been providing food, clothing, rent, and utility assistance to people in six counties of Southern Ohio. You can join the St. Martin District of St. Vincent de Paul in helping our neighbors with a monetary or vehicle donation, which is simple and easy. 800-322-8284 or donate online at runforthepoor.org. Support for Sacred Heart Radio is from Hoting Realtors. The trusted professionals at Hoting Realtors have been serving neighbors, family, and friends in the tri-state Catholic communities for over 30 years. 513-451-4800 and at Hoting.com. Support for Sacred Heart Radio is from Sunset Janitorial Supply, a Catholic family business supplying the tri-state cleaning industry with commercial cleaning supplies, personal hygiene, equipment, and even machine repair. Free delivery to your business. More information at sunsetjanitorialsupply.com. Support for Sacred Heart Radio is from Stegman Landscape. Serving the tri-state since 1979, Stegman Landscape can create a picture-perfect landscape all year long. From design, installation, and maintenance to retaining walls, patios, and outdoor fireplaces to enjoy any season. Stegman Landscape can do it all. Stegman Landscape, making the world more beautiful one yard at a time. 859-781-1562 and online at stegmanlandscape.com. Support for Sacred Heart Radio is from Trinity Church Supply, providing church supplies and religious gifts worldwide. 
from Catholic greeting cards, books, and willow tree to sterling silver medals, rosary, sacramental gifts, and statues. Trinity Church Supply, 5479 North Bend Road. I'm Father Dan Schmittmeyer, Director of Vocations for the Archdiocese of Cincinnati. Thank you for listening to Sacred Heart Catholic Radio. 740 WNOP Newport, 910 WPFB Middletown, or get the app, stream, podcast, and more at sacredheartradio.com. Arise, it's a new day. Hear his word, let us pray. The sunrise morning show. Hey, a way to start your day. We continue on the last day of our membership drive here on Sacred Heart Catholic Radio, and since we have the Feast of St. Patrick this weekend on Sunday. Let's pray more of his breastplate prayer in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. I arise today through a mighty strength, the invocation of the Trinity, through belief in the threeness, through confession of the oneness of the creator of creation. I arise today through God's strength to pilot me, God's might to uphold me, God's wisdom to guide me, God's eye to look before me, God's ear to hear me, God's word to speak for me, God's hand to guard me, God's shield to protect me, God's host to save me from snares of devils, from temptation of vices, from everyone who shall wish me ill, afar and near. I arise today through a mighty strength, the invocation of the Trinity, through belief in the threeness, through confession of the oneness of the creator of creation. Amen. St. Patrick pray for us. We're asking for his intercession, uh, among others, as we try and hit our $120,000 goal by day's end. Just so you know, we got a long way to go. So I'm just going to lay it out straight. Uh, we, uh, we need your help. And right now I'm looking at it and we are at about the $48,000 mark, uh, which means that if we can get a few different people to donate right now, if we can get, it's actually 48,403. I need 16 people, 16 people right now, as soon as you're able, to call in and give $100 and get us to $50,000 so we can at least put that benchmark to bed. You can go to 513-731-7740. Again, 513-731-7740. Call right now. Somebody will pick up the phone, and it'll be a listener like you uh, who's uh, ready to take that donation. You can go on and very easily with a click or two, make that uh, $100 one-time gift, one of the 16 of you. And uh, even easier than that, Venmo. Uh, if you go to Venmo and look us up at Sacred Heart Radio, I would love to be able to hit that $50,000 mark here in the next few minutes so that we don't have to worry about that particular benchmark anymore. And Anna Mitchell, I mentioned the breastplate prayer of St. Patrick. I'm going to be pre- praying portions of it to begin every hour. Right. And uh, St. Patrick is all over uh, Target and Walmart and uh, your local pub. And holding a, holding a, a, a pitcher of beer. He's everywhere Yeah, and nowhere at the same time because instead of St. Patrick's image, you mostly see like leprechauns and stuff right. and uh, weird green hats like that don't Pots look anything like the bishop hat of St. Patrick. Right, uh, But here on Sacred Heart Radio, not only do we get to pray the breastplate of St. Patrick, which is a morning prayer, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, it is, I, I arise, arise today. today, right? Absolutely. We get to do that here on Catholic Radio, but think about it even just the different ways we've been able to tell you about the real St. Patrick. Mike Aquilina was on earlier this week talking about St. Patrick as a father of the church and really digging in to his real story. Rita Heikenfeld did the same thing and even shared a, an Irish recipe, right? to commemorate St. Patrick. These are the things that we can do on Catholic radio that nobody else on the dial is able to do. And if you appreciate that as much as I do, because I need to have that anchor, I need to have that that in my life, then please give us a call, 513-731-7740. Donate online, sacredheartradio.com, or Venmo at Sacred Heart Radio. Matt, you say that this is something that others on the dial elsewhere on the dial aren't able to do 
I would say I not willing to don't do. Don't want to do. <laughs> I mean, honestly, this is. Or it might not even occur to them to do. It, yeah, it, actually, that's probably the best way to put it. It doesn't occur to them, and I am so grateful for Catholic Radio to stay in touch with our friends, the saints. Um, that they become friends to us. You and I get to, I mean, all through Lent, we have been discussing our friends, the saints. When we get to know the saints, when we get to know those who are working in the vineyard of the Lord uh, on the other side of the veil, shall we say, it becomes a lot thinner, that veil, and we start to recognize when they're working in our lives. This is so important for us just as human beings, to recognize that there is this other side of the veil and it is operating now, Mm -hmm. right now. And the Holy Spirit is operating now. You know that you hear that when you're listening to Catholic Radio because those are those times, Matt, we talk about this a lot, don't we? Where something just kind of comes out And it was exactly what you needed to hear at exactly that moment. These are the things that we are asking you to support and to keep on the air. 513-731-7740. 513-731-7740. Go online to sacredheartradio.com and click donate or Venmo at Sacred Heart Radio. Just one example of that, Matt. I was just thinking about stories, uh, you know, people bring this stuff up to us when they meet us in person. And there was one time that uh, a mom came up to me and and she was telling me how much she appreciated this interview uh, that I was doing with Danielle Bean. And that it was, her daughter was struggling at school and, and crying every morning and, you know, just didn't want to go to school and she heard this interview with Danielle that gave her, her daughter, her young daughter, the confidence to get up and go to school that day and not cry. And you know what? That interview was something that I, it was a pre recorded interview that I threw into that spot at the Because somebody very, else canceled? The very <laughs> last the live guest minute. probably canceled, yeah. No, not even canceled because the live guest that we had scheduled didn't, didn't answer the, the phone. phone. And so I said, okay, I go looking at what we had pre-recorded, and I said, okay, just throw in Danielle. It wasn't even a moment's thought in my mind. And yet that was exactly what that little girl needed to hear in that moment. That is how Catholic Radio works. It happens all the time. It's wild. You were very intentional when you had that conversation with Danielle. Absolutely. But you were not intentional about when it ran. Right. This happens actually all the time with the journey home also. We record these episodes months and months in advance sometimes. But when they air, it's shocking how uh, many times someone will say, well, I was having this situation in my life, and then I flipped on the journey home, and they spoke something that was exactly like my story. I'm like, yes, I planned that very meticulously. <laughs> Months in advance so that you, Presbyterian pastor, could hear another Presbyterian pastor at mm-hmm. just the right moment, right the night after you had this Christ. No, it, we're, we're servants of this, right? We are, yeah. we are just being open to what God has, uh, has to say here. And uh, if you appreciate that, if you've ever, if you've ever had a moment like that, uh, I would encourage you to make a gift to make those moments possible for other people. Again, 513-731-7740 is the number to call. Anna Mitchell, a few of those $100 donations have come in. Uh, if nice. we get 11 more people to call in and give $100, then that'll put us at the $50,000 mark, and Father Rob can breathe a little easier this afternoon. Fantastic. Um, Fantastic. The, there, are, there are a couple other points that I want to make, and you mentioned families. Um and I think that's a very important thing to think about here. And I would appeal especially to to older listeners with this particular point, um, people who maybe don't have kids at the house anymore. So when I first reached out to Sacred Heart Radio saying, hey, can I volunteer? This is like in 2005. Uh, Bill Levitt was so excited because I had training in radio. 
uh, but he was also excited because it was proof that somebody under the age of 75 was listening to Sacred Heart Radio. He was very, very thrilled about this. Yeah. And so he <laughs> invited me in and had mentioned, oh, the board is thinking about doing some youth programming. You're in your early 20s. Would you be interested in doing youth programming? And I was like, no, I would not be interested. Uh, and part of that's because I come from an evangelical world, and if you target youth with youth programming, the youth will roll their eyes and turn the channel. Mm -hmm. And so my recommendation at the time is, like, what if we just did the same thing that we're doing but made it come out of younger mouths and applied it to younger situations? What if we said things like, instead of, well, you may have grandkids who are going through this, or you may have your adult children who are struggling with this or whatever. What if we started saying things like, my as you're child. taking your kids to school or <laughs> yeah. as you're going to work today, mm -hmm. right? So that we were actually speaking directly to those people who are going to work, who are actively raising families, who are trying to figure out how to form their kids in the faith right now. Mm -hmm. um, the only issue with this, Anna Mitchell, is – and you know this because you are actively going to work and forming your children in the faith right now. Mm -hmm. That's the least financially free time in your entire life, yeah. <laughs> right? So the people who are benefiting from this by hearing it on their way to work and raising families in the moment are the ones who are probably least likely to be able, unless they're very blessed, to make these $100 gifts, right? To make these commitment recurring payments. But there are those of you who I hear from all the time who are older, your kids are out of the house, and you think to yourselves, what can I do to reach the young people? What can I do to you know, to help these young families do a better job. Well, pay for their work listening, right? Yeah. Pay for their listening on their commute. Make yeah. it to where when they're in a rush and they're getting their family out the door and they flip on the radio, Sacred Heart Radio is there for them. And if you want to be a person who has the means to do that because you want to see those young families make it and have a great foundation of faith and have an anchor, then please give us a call at 513-731-7740. Again, 513-731-7740. You can also give online at sacredheartradio.com or Venmo at Sacred Heart Radio. And if you are one of those parents of a young family, can you afford 10 bucks a month? We can set it up that it comes out of your credit card, $10, $10 each month on your credit card bill. Could you do that much? That is what we've been asking folks to do during this membership drive particularly because we're very intentional about calling it a membership drive we recognize that uh that the financial situation in in our country and around the world right now is tough we know that inflation is unreal right now and that things are costing more and more but can you can you spare 10 bucks can you spare 10 bucks a month and set that up so that it comes out of your credit card each month. We would be so grateful. If we had a thousand people do that, we would have knocked this pledge drive out, this membership drive out on day one with a thousand people saying, okay, I can have $10 taken out of my credit card each month. 513-731-7740. Give us a call so that you can set that up. Uh, there are people sitting by the phones waiting for that call 513-731-7740 online at sacredheartradio.com click donate it's very easy to set up a monthly donation that way and matt i don't i actually don't use venmo i, so I don't I've know. only can used it a couple up, times and i've only used it to donate to sacred heart radio i was a, shocked at I was shocked at how easy it would be. There, actually, well, I'm we just have a QR code to download up Venmo a, on our page. I'm yeah. just wondering if you can set up a recurring payment because I actually I have I, um, know, I, I have that. a recurring payment going out of PayPal. So I wonder if Venmo does the same thing. If you can do that, that would be awesome is to set up a recurring donation um, in that way through Venmo. Yeah, that's but, a great point about PayPal because sometimes people have like their little cash back uh, mm -hmm. uh, thingies so that they – uh, have it set up uh, a little plug-in on their browser to where every, every time they buy something, in my case from like Bass Pro Shops or uh, <laughs> yeah. something like that, it gives you like a dollar back on, yeah. your, on your purchase. And that sort of, sort of adds up. And uh, next thing you know, you got, you got like $60 in that thing. Yep. And uh, you can just be like, hey, you know what? This is money I already spent on, you know, crankbaits. Fishing baits. poles. So, yeah. 
Not really fishing poles. Those are expensive. No. Oh, but like okay. a, if I find a $4 crankbait on clearance, you know, I will get that every once in a while. But <laughs> that, that builds up. And maybe you've got one of those accounts and you're like, eh, I've just got like $65 sitting here. I was just going to blow it on something random. Uh, well, maybe consider uh, making that gift to Sacred Heart Radio. Mm -hmm. uh, Anna Mitchell, I want to um, put another plug out because we were talking about working families and the benefit that those who are maybe out of the workforce and retired and their families are grown, the benefit that they're giving to these working families by making Sacred Heart Radio possible. So I'm looking at, at masstimes.org and uh, looking in the Cincinnati area. And there, you know, there's some daily masses in the, in the morning uh, downtown, mm -hmm. right? But there's a few other daily masses. Uh, a lot of daily masses don't start until 8.30 or, or even 8 or 9 or a lot of them at noon or some of them are at 5, uh, 5.15. If you're a working person, it can be real hard to make daily mass. Uh, you know, I look around at daily mass the times that I'm able to go, and it's me and a bunch of people who are retired, yeah. right, and a few homeschool families. People who are in the workforce are not usually able to attend daily mass. But when you support Sacred Heart Radio, you make daily mass available on the radio so that somebody on their lunch break can tune in and at least hear the liturgy of the words. Hear a Dominican homily, right? A person who does not have or the ability Franciscan to get... Or Franciscan homily. Or Franciscan homily, right? Who can't get all the way out of their office, you know, to Mass and back in that little window of time that they've got. They can hear it on the radio, right? Or again, they can hear a piece of it on the radio, even just to get connected with the readings. That's a gift that you're giving to these people in the workforce so that they can go back into work for the home stretch of their day when everybody's having their caffeine crashes and dragging through the afternoon, they can have that boost of spiritual insight and accompaniment and encouragement before they hit the office again or hit whatever it is they've got to do for the rest of the day. That's a gift you give to them if you support Sacred Heart Radio. So 513-731-7740. Again, 513-731-7740. Donate online, sacredheartradio.com. Or you can give through Venmo at Sacred Heart Radio. Anna Mitchell, yes, I want to just shout out those people who I was talking to directly because uh, whatever I said worked because we just hit the $50,000 nice. mark. So thank, thank you, you so much. On behalf of the working families of the tri-state. Yes. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. For thank keeping you, Sacred thank Heart Radio you on, on so a kid can hear. On behalf of the parents so that are driving to school it. right now yeah. who are, you know, paying 10 bucks for their kids to have lunch in the cafeteria who gotta stop for gas and are just like oh another forty dollars yeah right are, 40? Uh, are you thing? kidding is that how cheap it is for you well my gosh it's like 60 bucks to to well i don't fill it up all the fill way fill up I my mean, minivan i don't fill it up all the way oh okay that's well, that's point. the other thing about you people who don't have to go to work today is that you're not driving right now unless you're driving to mass and if you are driving to mass then you don't have to be anywhere in a hurry once you get back to the parking lot so you can even just do it from your phone in the parking lot. Yeah, absolutely. Especially with Venmo. It's super easy. Again, people are always like, how do we reach the young people? How do we do this? I don't know how we re help them on their way to work. And you know what? <laughs> this is something that I talked about with Bill and Leah Levitt yesterday. Uh, they had me come on. I think it was somewhere around 2 o'clock in the afternoon. At which and point you have to have your kids with I you, was right? like, because I had a working person. Well, yeah, it was funny because I'm, I'm in my basement and I have to um, – leave in about a half an hour to go pick up Roma and I've got Agnes who I you know tried to take down sleeping she was on my she was sitting on my lap when I got the call saying hey why don't you come on with us and uh well she woke up as I was going downstairs what are you gonna do but anyway a sleepy Agnes Freddie's like literally jumping on my lap into the Bill can say Bill just came in and sat down he can he can attest to this but I was saying to them yesterday, Agnes, who is not even two years old yet, uh, when I'm in the car driving to go pick up the kids from school um, right after Call to Communion goes off the air, uh, you hear a promo for the Sunrise Morning Show that runs, you know, the next whatever's coming up the next day, and then it, it runs our, our the end of our jingle, you know. Agnes sings along with it. My not even two-year-old. She's absorbing what she's hearing on the radio when she's in the car 
Um, so what does that tell you about the kids who are sitting in the back seat? You may think they are not paying attention, but they're oh, kids they're are absorbing always it. paying attention. They and are about, absorbing it. So my my son at age twelve can give you the jingle for every single commercial that airs during an NFL broadcast. Exactly. Right. Uh, the, if it's that easy for the NFL and their ad campaigns that run in between the spots to get into your kid's head, like imagine how easy it is to just have the right thing on in the car. Yep. So he's got a, a future as a jingle singer, does he? Uh, are you there's, looking for one? There's I mean, some because, big money uh, there, I can tell you that, uh, from yeah, doing jingles myself over do. the years. So, <laughs> so you used, if you, people wonder, like, where did Bill Levitt come from? How did we find this person? Well, he was in the promo world, right? Yeah, this is um, what you did for a living. That's for sure. figure that's out how sure. to make things memorable to people. And what what is more worth making memorable to people than the most important thing in the world, which is our faith? Well, and you know, let's talk about Sacred Heart Radio listeners in general. Where do you see Sacred Heart Radio listeners? You see them as the lectors. They're the extraordinary ministers at Mass. Uh, they have upped the level of their participation there, and it's that's, of course, why so you know, many what, what of them— What is more yeah, worth making yeah. memorable to people than the most important thing in the world, which is our faith? That's well, right. You know, let's Who's talk that? about Sacred Heart here? Radio listeners in general. We're Where living do in you a loop. see Sacred Heart Radio listeners? You see is... them as the lectors. Oh, weird. Mike, you know what that was? You were checking on the total, and you I accidentally was. pulled up our video. Somehow oh. our video stream well, started playing. To quote the White Stripes, you heard it once before, but it bears repeating. It be <laughs> <laughs> Speaking yeah, of repeating, no. I'm going to repeat the phone number here real quick. 513-731-7740. Again, 513-731-7740. We're $73 uh, away from $51,000. Oh, wow. All right, sacredheartradio.com if you want to up that. Uh, you can go Sacred Heart Radio's uh, Venmo account is just at Sacred Heart Radio. And I want to I want to key in on that, Bill, because you you mentioned that, you know, where are Sacred Heart Radio listeners? Uh, they are lecturing, right? They are working at the Society of St. Vincent de Paul. They are volunteering in their parish. They are running fish fries. They are working at pregnancy centers. They are doing all these things. I know because whenever I've gone to those events— I see the parking lot full of yes, Sacred Heart yes. Radio bumper stickers. They're, they're the ones at the festivals. They like, are. That 2%, but the, that 2 active in the parish are Sacred Heart Radio They are Radio Sacred Heart Radio listeners, listeners yes. but some of them are people who are Sacred Heart Radio listeners who used to be a lot more active. Uh, and yes. they've you know advanced in age because over the course of 23 years on the air, uh, we've all gotten a little older. Not me. Uh, and, Not me. <laughs> and some of those people are now on fixed incomes, right? Or, or they're listening, or they're homebound, or they can't be, for physical reasons, able to join us at Mass. But Sacred Heart Radio can, keeps them connected with their Catholic family. Uh, without Sacred Heart Radio, they would still see the person who br brings them communion, right? Yes. But because they're able to hear Sacred Heart Radio, this is a gift you give to them. Uh, I mean— when I, I'm not in the Cincinnati area right now, but I listen to Sacred Heart Radio all the time because I love hearing commercials about, like, you know, uh, Honda East, <laughs> right? The jingle that I grew up with, speaking of jingles, or I love hearing about, you know, the voice of Father Rufino and Comboni missionaries and thinking of all the cool things that I've gotten to experience visiting their Christmas display. I mean, the memories that you're able to give, the connection you're able to give to the homebound listeners is an extraordinary gift. You are con keeping them connected with their Catholic family in the Tri-State. And you know, many of them are missing some of the wonderful programming that we've been playing here that they join every day because of this membership drive. And we don't want to, we don't want to deny you the programs that you listen to every day here, especially, uh, well, when I was on these last couple of days, I'm sure that was torture for everyone, but uh, but that's okay. You <laughs> Might know, have been this, more torture for Lent. you, I'm well, not sure. No, it is yeah. Lent. We all have to make a little sacrifice every so often, So, uh, but, but we want that regular programming to return because that's what you provide for us here. So please help. Please help bring back that. You want to hear Teresa Tamio again at 9 o'clock. You want to hear... Dr. Ray at one and call to communion at two, all the things that we've kind of removed because of this special programming here. And we need to do that. We need to do that because we're asking you to, to make a sacrifice for many of you. It is a sacrifice. And we understand $10 a month may not be in the budget at this point, but we're trying to kind of clarify it in a, a certain point of saying, if you spend $10 on lunch, maybe one lunch a month could go to Sacred Heart Radio. Hey, listen, man, Bill, there are people who are about to spend a whole lot more on 
Guinness this weekend for ten dollars. <laughs> yes, that's right. Uh, and that's I know right. I know how much corned beef costs a pound. There's going to be a lot more money spent on a on a you know corned beef boiled dinner this weekend than ten dollars. Uh, and, and you know I would just say uh, think about the kinds of things you spend money on. I'm not saying don't spend money on those things. Obviously, celebrate oh, the yeah. feast of yeah. Saint Patrick. But but remember us in the mix. Remember us in that mix. And you know, Bill. In this work with Catholic media, there's a lot of Catholic media out there, right? A lot of great choices. There a is. lot of things that I listen to besides just Catholic radio. But I also see some numbers coming out on the, the, the amount of money it takes to put together some of these other things, some of these ad campaigns, right? They, where you get a 30-second hit with somebody or, or something else. And, and the millions of dollars it takes to, to produce sometimes or get the word out about a 30-second or a 60-second spot. Or, uh, and I'm glad you've, you've th- said or that. Or things like that. And we're asking yeah. for $120,000, right. which would uh, pay for like maybe one staff member of about 50 on those campaigns, yes. right? We're asking for – we from the beginning, our goal at Sacred Heart Radio is to, to do the most with the little that we have. And I am shocked at how much we've been able to do with that uh with that mindset with that with that intent to be stewards it's been extraordinary yes well and and look we've been able to expand too along the way here and part of that is just stepping out in faith believing that if the lord puts something on our heart even if we say uh, uh, pick on somebody else lord uh, <laughs> which is what mother angelica used to say every time she was uh, was called to do something a little bit more, a little bit more extreme. She would say to the Lord, pick on someone else, but she would step forward and do that. Just like the studios that we built here three years ago, now we've added with the video aspect of this and, of course, the, the marketing part. The marketing part that we've just recently added was to get out there in front of all these church-going Catholics in the greater Cincinnati, northern Kentucky, Dayton area, to be able to let them know that there is this resource, this, uh, this resource that they can instantly provide them just a little bit more of what they need to know about their faith, to grow in their faith every day by listening just a few minutes. And, and let me say something about something that you just mentioned, and that is that there's a lot of resources out there to find Catholic programming of some kind, Catholic teaching. But here on Sacred Heart Radio, we have, it's, it's the combination of the most sought after teachers, uh, authors, uh, religious of our faith. They're all assembled here, all in one package. You know you're going to get the best. And uh, to bring you the best, of course, it, it does cost money to be able to do that, as it does EWTN and anyone else. That's why we need your help. But we want you to consider this as becoming a member, a family member of Sacred Heart Radio, because you really are, aren't you? The things you will do for your family, and yesterday, having Annie on with the family just goes to show you <laughs> growing where that families, comes from. Right? That's we're, right. We have growing That's right. families, we're, even among the staff. And we're trying to grow this family. We really are. We really need your help to be able to do it, and you would help out a family member, right? So today, become a member of our family. Step forward here. You know how much time you invest in listening here. You've heard us talk about this. So make a sound investment now for yourself and for many others, for the sake of many others. Because you know, here we are on fr- in Friday in Lent. And what do, we, what do we really focus on? We focus on the passion of the Lord. And sometimes the words that come to me are, God, God sent his only son into the world not to condemn it, not to condemn it, but to give us eternal life. And because of that, that's why you should celebrate with us here in being able to bring this good news to everyone out there, but especially you. You need it. I need it. Annie needs it. Matt needs it. Everybody needs it. We need more. We need more of it every day. We need to fill up with it every day. And what are we being filled up with? God's grace, because that's what brings us to that next level every day toward the ultimate reward. As we've been saying, membership has its rewards, so become a member of Sacred Heart Radio's family. And how do you do that, Annie? 513-731-7740. 513-731-7740. We've uh, crossed over the $51,000 mark. Thank you so much to those of you who have donated so far in uh, this first half hour of the last day of our Lenten membership drive. Welcome to the family, or thank you so much for re-upping your membership in the family today. And if you haven't called and given yet, particularly if you've never given before, K-1 
Can you spare 10 bucks a month? Make a $10 monthly donation at sacredheartradio.com. Just make it a recurring gift. Comes out of your credit card, 10 bucks. You won't even notice it. 10 bucks a month, 513-731-7740, sacredheartradio.com. Click on donate or give through Venmo at Sacred Heart Radio. We're at $51,423 raised. Let's get to 60 before the end Let's of the hour. Let's get to 60 Come on, that's the, that's the, the challenge. Let's get it. to 60, halfway there of what we need. Now, uh, let, let me tell you, we are so grateful, so grateful for all you have given us so far and will continue to give us. And, and we realize that this membership drive going on here for three days really will probably extend on until we finally hit that number. And the reason that we hit that number a little later is because, yes, there are some who who it may take a while for them to participate. As we've seen in previous years, uh, sometimes we'll receive a large donation weeks after the membership drive is over because somebody it took a while for them to be able to get a stock took a sold while or for somebody to get their tax refund that's back, right you that's know, right or to sell to some stock or yeah. something such as that so you yes, know we're, but for we, some people yes. bill it's payday it is Ooh, it's right but it's also friday it's also friday and this is we've never done one of these these drives uh in lent especially on a friday and we decided you know today if there'd be any day that we could kind of get the, you know, hit the rubber, hit the road here, it's this day, a, a Friday in Lent, where we consider what the Lord has done for us. And so while we're considering that, where do we grow in the knowledge of that? Well, Sacred Heart Radio, there it is. And all you have to do is listen five minutes a day, five minutes a day, and you will hear something you've never heard before. I do. I do. And I've been sitting around here and it's amazing. I'll walk through through the halls here because I'm in the studio back there, you know, playing with tape recorders, as they say. And uh, <laughs> and I'll walk through and I'll just listen for a couple of minutes. And I've never heard that before. Uh, oh, it's so funny yeah. that you, you mentioned that. So I was talking to uh, somebody the other day and, and we were sharing, you know, some of the things that ways that Catholic Radio had impacted us. And, and I mentioned that I'm not just a uh, I don't just work here. I'm also a customer. Uh, in the sense that it's not just a pretty face right i i this isn't just my gig i'm also here to benefit from it and what happens often i mean there have been times when i've been driving around and i've heard something that you know dr david andrews has said and i'd be like oh man oh yeah that's on it like that's it but uh it also happens during the course of the sunrise morning show often when i'm in the middle of an interview and i'm talking to somebody and you have and this i mean annie can attest to this too you have what you thought were the talking points and the places you wanted this conversation to go. And then even as you're talking, something comes out and you're like, wow, I don't know if, I don't know if that was good for the listeners, but that benefited me. Yeah. <laughs> that benefited me, right? This isn't Matt, a, why do you think I schedule the people that I do why, on this, this show? It's the all Sunrise for me. <laughs> with this in mind, like we... There it is. We, Why we give want to grow. for you, right? Right. That's, yeah. that's we want first. to grow. Uh, I want to be better at you know being a, a, a follower of Christ tomorrow than I was today, and I hope I'm better today than I was yesterday. Uh, but I can't do. I'm Pelagianism is a heresy. There's the the idea that you can do this stuff by yourself without the aid of grace. That's a heresy condemned by the church. I need the help. I need the grace, and I am so honored to be part of this team that helps to put this stuff out there. And I'm, I'm so humbled whenever any of you give, like so many of you have so far. And I would just encourage those of you who have not to join the family. Maybe you can give a one time of $100. Uh, maybe you could give uh, a monthly gift. Uh, but we are very much looking forward to hearing from you. And maybe even hearing your story of how it's impacted you. You can share that when you call us at 513-731-7740. Again, 513-731-7740. Make a gift of any size any size, it helps. And pray for us, those of you who can't give. Can you commit to maybe saying a decade of the rosary for us today if you are not able to give? Uh, you can also give online at sacredheartradio.com. Uh, again, sacredheartradio.com, the donate button is uh, very prominently featured. And uh, Venmo. It's green in honor of St. Patrick. It's green, uh, St. Patrick. It's green for go is, donate. Is that true? 
I don't know. I, never I, just, know that. I just made that up. I <laughs> totally you just made that so up. You are so fast on your feet, especially know, after right? three days about doing this. I you know, know, right? I'm it's, surprised it's live we're not radio. Kind of going, we were yeah, playing yeah, Ryan yeah. Lopez and Paul Lockman and Man Buns yesterday. Who knows what's going to happen yeah. at this yeah. point? Yeah. Save yeah. us well, from we, ourselves. You know, we, we would love to get you in a Man Bun, uh, yes. Matt. But to, and you know, how long have you worked here? Do you know how many? How, yeah, how many years have you? Uh, I would here? have to look officially, but uh, the Sunrise Morning Show started went on the air in 2007. I'd come on full time earlier that year and was doing part time work for you mm. for about a year before that. Yes, yes, and he's it's had, a long go, time. and he's gone through so many changes. Remember when he used to have long flowing bo- blonde hair that we could have put when up in a big old met him. That That's Remember what that? Oh, come on, you remember that? I don't don't remember you? Any of that. <laughs> You we see, have all you see we have how all we, how gone we through each other around here life. just like family. That's why we want you as part of our family so we can raz you. Yeah. Yeah, we absolutely. want to raz you good, you know. So. <laughs> if Bill Levitt doesn't make fun of you, he doesn't love you. I mean, him. honestly, if you would like to walk in with a check um, and have that. Bill Levitt raz you like, like he would a member of the family. I never do those. He things. would you love. Say, here's a check for uh, Sacred Heart Radio. Can you comment on my outfit? No. Oh, <laughs> I would never do that. Comment on my hairdo today. Yes. What do you think? What do what you do think, you think Bill? Oh, you know what he would say? Say no. what hairdo? No, I would never do that. I <laughs> see. See how? See what they're saying? They're telling stories about me that are not. You know what's true. funny is but that that's okay. I, they're going to confession today. In the uh, in the old days of being at the Our Lady of the Holy Spirit Center, people used to wander in all the time and uh, you know say hello, check out the station, and sometimes hand you a check. And and I remember talking to some people who had done that. And you know what their first thing that they usually said to me after coming into the station and running into you and maybe writing a check for $25, $100, whatever it happens to be, they always said, Bill Levitt sounds in person exactly like he sounds on the air. It's amazing. Am yes. I yes, yes, yes. Until we get to the the one o'clock hour, you know, let me just be honest. And then he okay? sounds now that, now, old. now that I'm getting now that I'm getting up there and it's okay at this time of the morning, but about ten o'clock I start talking like this, you know, and then, hey, get off my lawn. Bring me a check. Uh, unless you have a check, get off my lawn, you know, so. Spare well, him, to prevent Bill gentlemen. Levitt uh, from losing his mind That's by right. 10 a.m., please yeah. do give us a call at 513-731-7740, 513-731-7740. Make a gift of any amount. I would love to see some of those $100 donations come in from those of you who can afford them because that helps us really get the – Get the totals up and and make a dent here. Let's get to sixty thousand by the end of this Let's try hour. For it. This Let's try hour, for it. sixty thousand. Yeah. There's by somebody the end out of the there hour. who could write a check for a thousand. That's uh, right. Or make a Venmo account uh, donation for a thousand. Venmo that would at be Sacred wonderful. Heart Radio. Uh, again, SacredHeartRadio.com, an easy way to give. And let us know why you're giving. We want to know what the impact has been for you. We got to hit a break because we got some guests to get to: Bobby Schindler, Father Jonathan Duncan, and a couple of others. It's thirty six minutes past the hour. This year, celebrate St. Patrick's Day with the 76th Annual Friends of Ireland Mass at St. Peter and Chains Cathedral in Cincinnati, sung by the Friendly Sons of St. Patrick Glee Club. For more information, visit sacredheartradio.com slash events. Support for Sacred Heart Radio is from Schneller Knockelman Plumbing, Heating, and Air, treating customers with integrity for over 90 years for heating, air conditioning, water heaters, plumbing, and more. Schneller Knockelman at skpha.com skpha.com. St. Vincent de Paul, Northern Kentucky, understands the importance of a helping hand when life becomes difficult. Through the grace of God and the amazing generosity of volunteers and donors, St. Vincent de Paul, Northern Kentucky has been able to provide over $200,000 in rent and utility assistance to nearly 2,000 neighbors in need in the last 12 weeks alone. The prayer is to continue to faithfully serve those in need well into the future. To learn how you can help, Visit svdpnky.org and follow along on social media. It's 24 minutes before the hour on this final day of Sacred Heart Radio's Lenten Membership Drive. Give us a call at 513-731-7740 or donate online at sacredheartradio.com. Your forecast is brought to you by Schneller Knockelman Plumbing, Heating, and Air online at skpha.com. Some morning showers today in Cincinnati, otherwise mostly cloudy skies with a high of 60 degrees. Partly cloudy tonight with an overnight low of 39. For the Miami Valley Dayton area, morning showers and then otherwise cloudy today with a high of 55. Partly cloudy tonight and an overnight low of 38. We need your help to reach that $120,000 goal during our membership drive today. Give us a call, 513-731-7740. 
online at sacredheartradio.com or Venmo at Sacred Heart Radio. And thanks. I think we're still trying to get uh, Bobby Schindler on the line. I don't know if we're able to get him. If that's not possible, it's okay. You know, the phone lines get a little weird on days like this. And maybe it's because you're calling to give right now. And if not, see if you can get in. 513-731-7740. Some of you might be interested in giving $10 a month. Some of you may be able to give 25 one time, 100 one time. I bet you there's somebody out there who could give 1000 or 2000 one time. You would make such a huge difference. Uh, in our pledge drive, and especially as we head towards the summer, where the giving kind of dissipates a little bit because everybody's on vacations. Uh, but again, you can give at 513-731-7740 or give online at sacredheartradio.com. Uh, Venmo us at Sacred Heart Radio. Anna Mitchell, uh, I just want to put it out there to anybody. I mean, and this is not like my Jeff Foxworthy routine or anything, but if you've ever found a plumber... Or a veterinarian, mm-hmm. or a fish sandwich at Arby's, because you listen to Sacred Heart Radio. <laughs> I mean, you, you you might you might be a listener to Sacred Heart Radio, right? Yep. If you've ever pulled up behind somebody with a Sacred Heart Radio bumper sticker and tried to speed up just far enough to see who it was driving, oh my gosh, you might be a Sacred Heart Radio. <laughs> Um, we did get a uh, – we got a note from a listener um, somewhere – oh, gosh, I can't remember what part of the country he's in. But he sent this note saying, I want you to tell whoever is underwriting the Arby's Yes, it was fish. somebody listening in Texas. He was like, like, I went to Arby's in Texas today. I want them to know I- that I went to Arby's in my town because I was hearing yeah. about Arby's in Cincinnati. And I – about fell out of my chair laughing. It was so awesome. And we're so grateful for for all of the businesses that that really are, I mean, we have our list. Well, they're listeners too. They are That's, the that, lifeblood well, it's a form of, listener of support, Sacred right? Heart Radio. Underwriting yeah. is a form of listener support. Uh, that underwriting covers a portion, but we have always been driven by the actual lay people. I think it's a great partnership. I mean, we're if our goal is to live every aspect of our life in a Catholic way, right? We do want to have those reminders like, hey, it's Friday and Lent. Don't get the sausage biscuit. It's mm-hmm. nice to have a, a source in your life that says that or something that reminds you that, oh, um, Advent is coming up. It's not Christmas yet, <laughs> right? right? Be in Advent. Or something that reminds you it's the Feast of St. Joseph as it's going to be next week. Uh, there's Target and Walmart and... Meyer are not going to have gigantic St. Joseph's Day displays, but we're going to talk about it here on Sacred Heart Catholic Radio next week. We are absolutely going to dial in to the Feast of St. Joseph. Yeah, Uh, But not just that. Uh, We've talked about how, you know, we do movie reviews from a Catholic perspective. We talk about eating from a Catholic perspective, but because we have these underwriters uh, on our angels list, which again, you can find that list of those who support Sacred Heart Radio from an underwriting perspective, uh, you can now... Uh, because of that, be like, oh, I want to get my orthopedics and sports medicine from a Catholic perspective. I know, I want right? to buy from the Cagney fam- family West Shell. Uh, yeah. I want to buy a home from a Catholic perspective. If you want to get, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know how many people need machine uh, you know, metals and all that other stuff, but Central Fabricators got you covered. You can do that from a Catholic perspective. You can go to the Fort Mitchell garage from a, I mean, all these things are meant for us to understand. I, I think one of the, uh, worst parts about all of the craziness in our culture is that we feel like we're the only people in the world uh, sometimes who believe any of this stuff, and it can be, be very isolating and lonely. But it turns out, like I say, if you go to the Angels List, you're like, oh, look at all these businesses. Mm-hmm. I can go up to the, you know, to the Del High Pet Center, and I'm like, oh, these people, these people understand, right? Yeah. The people behind the pet, Del High Pet Center, they believe too. They believe too, and that's an encouragement. Five one three. Seven three one seven seven forty. Give us a call right now. Make a donation while you're thinking about it. Five one three seven three one seven seven forty. I mean, we'll take a donation any day of the week, of course. But this is the last day of our Lenten membership drive, so get in on this party. Five one three seven three one 
seven seven forty. Go online to sacredheartradio.com and click donate or over Venmo at Sacred Heart Radio. Bill Levitt just walked in. Matt, I, I know you're Is looking that's at usually me on the either video really feed. good he news goes, or really bad news? Well, it, no, it's forward. very good news because okay. a number of people this morning already knew new members to our family, new members oh, awesome. to our family. Nice. From Welcome. Carol from Co- Port Clinton, uh, Jennifer from Franklin, uh, Jim from uh, Mooresville, uh, Augusta, uh, Kentucky, Gary, uh, uh, Edwin, in fact, uh, some people wow. from uh, Wisconsin, you know, if we oh, must be listening you. on the app there. So yeah. uh, North That's Dakota. Um, Anna listening from Cincinnati app, gave us $500. Because... So... Yeah, we... We these offer are, these that are app new, for free. New members. Yes, right? the, we offer that app for free, and it's only—I mean, a lot of apps you got to pay for. You got to pay a subscription service for. You download them for free, and then you got to pay to actually use them. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sacred Heart Radio app is free and will always be free, and it, it's only possible because people give to make it free. So people around the world, uh, people serving overseas in the military, we hear from sometimes who are listening to things like Elder Games, right? So yes. when you give at SacredHeartRadio.com a gift of any amount, you make that possible worldwide even and we are let's see seven thousand nine hundred seven dollars away from the sixty thousand dollar mark which we are hoping to hit before we move into the eight o'clock hour so we've got 15 minutes can we make that happen 513-731-7740 make a donation right now and uh, get us over that sixty thousand dollar mark All right. Father Jonathan Duncan joins us next. It is a quarter till. Support is from Solidarity HealthShare. Do you have an insurance plan that pays for everything, even things that violate your beliefs? Have you ever felt there has to be a better way, but didn't know you had any options? If you answered yes, I've got some good news for you. There is a better way and a more affordable way. Solidarity HealthShare can save you hundreds of dollars each month while actually supporting your beliefs. Because the best news is that Solidarity HealthShare costs a whole lot less than insurance. It's time to jump in and put your money where your faith is. And put some money back into your wallet at the same time. Join Solidarity HealthShare, a faith-based healthcare sharing community. Prices start as low as $384 a month for families. Call to see how much you can save. 844-334-3245. That's 844-334-3245. Solidarity Health Share, 844-334-3245. Have you subscribed to get the Sunrise Morning Show show notes? When you subscribe, the show notes arrive in your inbox weekday mornings with the list of featured guests, books, articles, and websites we'll discuss. And then you'll also get the podcast with markers to quickly find and hear an interview again or to see the Sunrise Morning Show on video. So to know when your favorite guests are on, go to sunrisemorningshow.com and click subscribe. This is Deacon Bob Schrader with a Lenten prayer for avoiding sin. Hear, Lord, the prayers we offer from contrite hearts. Have pity on us as we acknowledge our sins. Lead us back to the ways of holiness. Protect us now and always from the wounds of sin. May we ever keep safe in all its fullness the gift your love once gave us and your mercy now restores. Amen. and deacons who's recorded stuff for us over the years. Deacon Bob Schrader's been recording. I mean, he was he was recording stuff with us uh, ages ago. I mean, if you've ever heard your own pastor or deacon on the radio and thought, that's pretty cool that my own community is represented here on Sacred Heart Catholic Radio, then please make a gift. Uh, maybe consider a $100 one time, uh, maybe a $250 one time if you're available to do that. Uh, we're trying to hit that $60,000 mark by the end of the hour. And I bet you there's somebody out there who's got $5,000 burning a hole in their bank account, someone uh, with a little bit of expendable income who could help us out with a gift at sacredheartradio.com or over the phone, 513-731-7740. That's 513-731-7740. Venmo at Sacred Heart Radio. I'm Matt Swaim, joined now by Father Jonathan Duncan from the Diocese of Charleston, who joins us each week around this time to look ahead to the Sunday Mass readings. Father Duncan, good morning. Good morning, Matt. Good to be with you. 
Yeah, good to be with you as well. You know, I, we've been talking before we get into this Sunday Gospel reading uh, about how yeah. all the time I hear stuff on Catholic radio, just like a nugget, uh, and it'll shed new light on something that I thought of before, but maybe not in that way, or maybe something I haven't thought of before uh, at all. I gotta say, your segments where you unpack the Sunday Mass readings is one of the places that happens mo- more, most often, so thank you for that. Well, thank you. Yeah, I was thinking about it today and thinking about you, the great ministry you'll do, and I immediately actually uh, was drawn to this Sunday's Gospel where Jesus says, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain, but if it does, it produces much fruit. And I was just thinking about, like, the gifts that your listeners bring may seem to them like this is this small grain of wheat, and yet by offering that, by giving that in sacrifice, like it's going to bear all kinds of fruit. And, and the really beautiful thing is that God is, is inviting the listeners into this work so that that little contribution or big contribution or whatever it may be, whatever that gift is, it's going to bear fruit for people, people who may be considering coming back to the faith. I hear from people all the time who say, yeah, hey, I shared what I heard on the radio with my friend who's away from the church or maybe not Christian, not even consider themselves religious at all. And so uh, God wants you to join in that work, and maybe you can't uh, share it, or maybe you can't do theological teaching or, or lead a Bible study or a, a group, but this is one way you can be joined into this work. Yeah, uh, there's another passage from <laughs> the Sunday's Gospel that immediately made me think of sort of the the humor of working in 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 the radio world and i'm sure that you actually encounter this all the time just in regular priestly ministry either through homilies or for advice that people give or ask you for so jesus uh is asked right um by some people you know we'd like to see jesus and philip and went and told andrew andrew and philip went and they told jesus and jesus says the hour has come for the son of man to be glorified and and uh goes on to say, what should I say? Father, save me for this hour, but it was for this purpose that I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. And then the voice comes from heaven, right? Uh, It says, I have glorified it and will glorify it again. Now, the fascinating part of this story, and what I find humorous, is that some people are like, an angel has spoken. This is the voice from heaven. And other people are like, ah, it's probably just thunder. Right? (laughs) (laughs) And... I think that sometimes that that can happen with um when we're trying to put the word out there like you know you never know if uh this extraordinary message that comes from like Father John Ricardo or from one of the Dominicans that has daily mass or maybe from one of our segments or or something that Dr. John Bergsma says uh you know you never know who that's going to hit and somebody's going to be like this is a voice from heaven and other people are just going to be like ah I'm going to hit the scan button. So on behalf of those people I would just say Keep on putting those words out because you never know who's going to be like, that's the voice. That's right. And that's part of, you know, part of what makes the new covenant glorious is that it's it's a mysterious covenant, you know, because, you know, we're going to hear from this Sunday from the prophet Jeremiah that God is, is speaking of this new covenant he's going to do where it's, the law is going to be written on our hearts and of course, all throughout the Gospels, Jesus uses imagery, which is a little bit mysterious, right? He uses this image of like planting. He says, you know, the kingdom, this new covenant, it's, it's going to be like, uh, it's going to be like seed that's going to be scattered, and, and you're not going to see it. You're not going to quite know where it's going to pop up, but it's going to pop up, and it's going to be amazing. And when it does pop up, when people do respond by God's grace, they're going to bear all kinds of fruit. And there, there is something a little bit mysterious about, it, just like you said, of. of some people are going to hear the faith, and we've all known this. We've all known families where, uh, you know, all the kids were, were raised, were taught the faith, and yet for a variety of reasons they, they leave the faith. And yet others who come from a just awful background, dysfunction, no faith life, nothing, and they hear a homily, they hear a word, they hear something simple, and it stirs the grace of God in them. And so there's, there's a mystery to this work that's exciting and beautiful and, and frustrating at times. But oh, also frustrating ultimately. for sure, right? 
Absolutely. Well, uh, just I want to throw the number out there in the website real quick because there's another point I think is is really worth making here. But the number, if you want to give to help us in our membership drive here, uh, make a gift, a one time or a recurring gift, maybe a hundred dollars, maybe less, maybe more. Five one three seven three one seven seven forty. Again, five one three seven three one seven seven forty. You can give online at sacredheartradio.com. Make a gift of any amount there, or you can do a, a Venmo gift. Venmo at Sacred Heart Radio. So there's this Chestertonian principle. Uh, G.K. Chesterton makes this remark about how uh, the thing about seeing something for a thousand times is that you become frightfully close to being in danger of seeing it for the first time. And what I've found in the course of Sacred Heart Radio, I mean, you feel like sometimes you're like saying the same things over again or like, Catholic Answers is getting the same questions about call no man father, or they're getting, you know, why do Catholics pray to statue? Like, these same questions seem to keep on popping up, but you never know when someone is going to hear that argument or hear that gospel passage, right, for the 15th time, the 500th time, but they're going to then hear it for the first time. So by persevering and keeping on saying these things, you just never know who's going to maybe even heard this thing from Catholic school up through the 12th grade and might actually be in danger of hearing it like hearing it, hearing it for the first time. That's absolutely true. I mean, that's part of the, you know, faith is not something that can be compelled. Uh, it's not something that can be forced. It, it has to flow by the grace of God, by the Spirit of God, uh, in, in a place of freedom. And, and so you never know when it's going to be that time where it's like, oh, my God, this this is true. This is good. This is beautiful. Um and that's why it's, it's so important what y'all do. Yeah. Well, thank you for Again, your part in it. God could do this work without us 1,000%. He could raise up children from the rocks. He could raise up faith with none of this. But he's chosen. He desires and delights to use messed up messengers like us to bring this goodness, truth, and beauty to people. Well, and the last thing I'll just ask you is that you're a priest. You can't be everywhere all at once. You're actually— you know, you were a priest from another tradition before you became Catholic, so you were married and you got a family. Uh, and you cannot be in every hospital room and in every school classroom and in every parish 24-7. So our goal is to help you out by being present on the air during all those other times. So that's we want to help you, Father. Absolutely. Well, thank you for doing what you do. All right. And thank you for your part in the Sunrise Morning Show family. It's been I learn something new from Father Duncan almost every week. It's one of my favorite moments of the week, and it also helps me really prep for Sunday Mass so I don't just go in and get surprised by the readings. Uh, that's one of the great gifts, I think, of Sacred Heart Radio, to have not one but actually two priests every Friday morning uh, between Father Duncan and Father Hezekiah to help us really prepare to receive those Sunday readings. If you appreciate that, help us to keep doing just such things. Give us a call right now during our Linton membership drive. Help us hit our goal. Make a gift of any amount, 513-731-7740, or give online at sacredheartradio.com. Back after this, it's 3 till. Support for Sacred Heart Radio is from Molly Maid of Westchester. With 30 years of trusted, quality service and a 100% satisfaction guarantee. 1-800-MOLLY-MAID or at mollymaid.com. Molly Maid, a clean you can trust. Support for Sacred Heart Radio is from Hoding Realtors. The current real estate market is challenging, but the professionals at Hoding Realtors are equipped with the market knowledge and tools needed to make home buying and selling easier. 513-451-4800 and at Hoding.com. I'm Bill Torbeck of Tri-State Abrasive and Tool Company, proud to support Sacred Heart Radio. Diamond and CBN are the most advanced cutting tools because they are the hardest materials known. These enable you to machine three to eight times faster compared to carbide, while reducing downtime for tool changes by 90%. Improve your productivity when machining hard, cast, and powdered metals or difficult to machine materials. Find out more at theabrasiveone.com. That's the number one, theabrasiveone.com. Lent is an opportune time to reflect on mortality. Learn more about the importance of the Catholic funeral rites and how to pre-plan. Gate of Heaven Cemetery of the Archdiocese of Cincinnati is hosting a pre-planning seminar. Tuesday, March 26th at 11 a.m., 2 p.m., or 6 p.m. Find out why the decision to be in a Catholic cemetery is so important to you and your family. Gate of Heaven, 513-489-0300. 
and at gateofheaven.org. The highest standards, integrity, and best practices are core values at Rainbow International of Cincinnati and Northern Kentucky, your partners in residential and commercial insurance repair and restoration. Rainbow International, proud to support Sacred Heart Radio, 513-271-1000. Support for Sacred Art Radio is from Rua Wood Psychological Services, integrating psychological science and the truths of our Catholic faith with offices in Dayton and Cincinnati. More information at 513-407-8878 or rwpsych.org. Working to see the culture of life prevail in the Miami Valley, Dayton Right to Life is here to protect God's gift of life through law, education, and community action from fertilization to natural death. Find Dayton Right to Life online at DaytonLife.org. That's DaytonLife.org. Psalm 38. O Lord, rebuke me not in thy anger, nor chasten me in thy wrath. For thy arrows have sunk into me, and thy hand has come down on me. I confess my iniquity. I am sorry for my sin. Do not forsake me, O Lord. O my God, be not far from me. Make haste to help me. O Lord, my salvation. For Sacred Heart Radio, this is Father Mark Watkins. I'm Father Jacob Verges from St. Peter and Paul, California, Kentucky. Thank you for listening to Sacred Heart Catholic Radio. 740 WNOP Newport, 910 WPFB Middletown, or get the app, stream, podcast, and more at sacredheartradio.com. Arise, it's a new day. Hear his word. We continue on this last day of our Lenten membership drive, and we pray for St. Patrick's intercession, praying more of his breastplate prayer. Of course, his feast is this weekend. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I rise today through a mighty strength, the invocation of the Trinity through belief in the threeness, through confession of the oneness of the Creator of creation. I arise today through the strength of Christ's birth with his baptism, through the strength of his crucifixion with his burial, through the strength of his resurrection with his ascension, through his strength of his descent, through the the judgment for the judgment of doom. Christ with me, Christ before me, Christ behind me, Christ in me, Christ beneath me, Christ above me, Christ on my right, Christ on my left, Christ when I lie down, Christ when I sit down, Christ when I arise, Christ in the heart of every man who thinks of me, Christ in the mouth of everyone who speaks of me, Christ in every eye that sees me, Christ in every ear that hears me. Amen. Christ in every ear that hears me. Are we looking for a pledge drive theme? Because that's it, right? That's the point. Uh, This is the whole reason we do what we do on Sacred Heart Catholic Radio. Christ in every ear that hears us. And if you want to be part of that mission, we are looking for gifts today to help hit our goal of $120,000. We're close to the halfway mark, and uh, if you can maybe give $100 one time, maybe $50 one time, maybe you are able to give $1,000 one time, those gifts put Christ in the ear of everyone who hears us. So give us a call at 513-731-7740. Again, 513-731-7740. We've got volunteers who are ready to take your calls, sacredheartradio.com is also where you can give. Again, that's sacredheartradio.com. Maybe it's easier for you to give through Venmo. Just look us up. We're easy to find at Sacred Heart Radio, and uh, we would love to help you, or have you help us help you, I guess. Uh, But (laughs) (laughs) at this point, we have been grinding and working. Help us help you help yourself. Yes, Uh, But again, any gift, any amount, these things help uh, continue this mission, right, uh, our 23-year mission to boldly go where nowhere, no one has gone before. Well, uh, we've gone there before. We've, the yeah, I mean, you know how it is. And we've been asking folks particularly um, to consider a $10 a month donation. Just a $10 a month. Can you have $10 taken out of your credit card each month? month? Do you think you would notice I certainly wouldn't. I don't even know how many subscriptions I have that come out of my credit card every month that uh, I don't think about at all or don't even use. And if you tune in for 10 minutes a day, 
You know, is that worth $10 a month to you? 513-731-7740. I was told by Beverly Matt that uh, Beverly Hill, our office manager. Exclu- that is her real name. It's not her radio name. Is really a, a poor way to describe Beverly's role here at Sacred Heart Radio. However, uh, that we have been lit up through Venmo, particularly. Good. We're getting more donations through Venmo than we are through phone calls, which I think is really interesting and really cool at the same so time. because Venmo is so, super easy. Venmo at Sacred Heart Radio is how you can make a donation. That way you can go That's how online I made my gift. to yeah. sacredheartradio.com and click on donate. And that is the easiest way to make a recurring donation. All you do is click on the green donate button and then you enter the amount and you click recurring and it will automatically come out of your credit card or your bank account, however you want to do it. Uh, and and just 10 bucks a month, if we had a thousand people agree to give 10 bucks a month, uh, we would be, well, more than done with our goal here at Sacred Heart Radio for our Lenten membership drive because a 1,000 people giving $120, which is what that amounts to over the course of a year, is our $120,000 goal. So You know, I'm going to throw out a way to give that uh, we don't really talk about as much anymore because we got the Venmo thing, but you can actually still text to give to Sacred Heart Radio. So if there's somebody who wants to do that, and that's easier for them because they might think to themselves, ah, it almost sounds interesting, but I don't want to download an app and go through all that stuff. If you text uh, SHR to 513-440-3837, you can just follow the prompts, and it'll uh, ask you a couple questions, and you can give that way. Again, if you want to give by text, I'm just going to see if see if anybody's out there that wants to do this. Um, text SHR to 513-440-3837. Thirty-eight, thirty-seven. That's 513-440-3837. If you text SHR to that number, it'll just list all the prompts for you. Yeah. And if you not. forgot that and didn't write it down, just go to sacredheartradio.com, and you'll see a button that says Ways to Give, and there's a drop-down menu that has all the different ways that you can give. If you want to give a stock gift, which some people have done in the past, you can set up a uh, bill pay feature through your bank account. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can even do donor-advised funds, life insurance, uh, if you're 70 and a half or older, you can donate up to $100,000 from your IRA to charity. And Ooh. if you did that, we would be well beyond our goal for the day. Yeah. Thank you uh, so much course... to Jennifer from Franklin, Ohio, who is a Ooh. new member of the Sacred Welcome, Heart Radio Jennifer. family, setting up a $10 persevering monthly gift. And so grateful to that. Matt, we got two donations today from listeners in North Dakota. Oh, nice! So, thank you so much. We got real presence uh, radio country. Yeah, exactly. We have a uh, we had a donation from John in Kingston, Tennessee. Oh, yeah, that's in do the Tri Cities. Tri Cities. I do. That's good to know. Kingston's up near Bristol. But the Motor thank you Speedway. so much to uh, Susan from Timonium, Maryland. Oh, who gave a donation today? Jim from Mooresville, North Carolina. Edwin from Rice Lake, Wisconsin. These are people who are all listening clearly through the Sacred Heart Radio app. Through the app. free Sacred Heart and Radio app that you are making free to people by giving. Yeah, Christopher so. from Elliot, Elli- sorry, not Elliot, Ellicott City, Maryland. That's up the street for me. That's where the St. Anthony Shrine is. That's oh, a cool spot. That's fantastic. I love and of that course, place. all of our local listeners, I mean, Carol from Port Clinton called in. Jennifer from Franklin, I just mentioned. Gary from Augusta, Kentucky. Dorothy from Morrow. I mean, all of these donations, and there are all kinds of amounts here from from twelve hundred dollars down to to ten bucks, and we're so grateful for it all because it all goes into the pot and helps us keep this on the air, helps us to invest further in that Sacred Heart Radio app that we were just mentioning to make the user experience all the better for those that just want to have Catholic radio available to them at a moment's notice in their pocket. And that pot is not a pot of gold. Otherwise, we wouldn't have to do this pledge drive. I know. But it is a pot that is hopefully growing towards that $120,000 goal, which we're trying to hit by day's end. And I know that many of you 
uh, are probably on your way to daily mass right now. Maybe you got a couple minutes in the parking lot beforehand. Maybe you went to an earlier daily mass and are just getting out and hearing our membership drive and now have a minute or two to make a gift. Then please do give us a call at 513-731-7740. Again, 513-731-7740. You can also give online, sacredheartradio.com. And those of you who use Venmo, just look us up. We are at Sacred Heart Radio. Our logo is hard to miss on the Venmo app. Joseph Pierce is now joining us. You've maybe perhaps entered his inner sanctum at jpierce.co or benefited from his many literary biographies. Maybe you've even had a class with him at uh, you know somewhere like the Augusta Institute or Thomas More or Aquinas College or somewhere like that because he's all over the place, and we are so grateful he makes a little time for us every week. Joseph, good morning. Good morning, Matt. It's good to be back. It's good to have you. I, there are so many things I'd love to say in you know, your favor and compliment you for your time on the Sunrise Morning Show. But I can tell you, and I don't know if I've ever told you this before, uh, when I was planning the Sunrise Morning Show back in 2007, I thought, we got to have this show that sounds like a like a real live morning show, you know, with like fast paces, but also not shallow, you know, stuff that's like kind of deep, where you get like a nugget of wisdom, you know, a nugget of something substantial you could bite onto. And I started in that era trying to think about like, who are all the Catholics who've written cool books that would be fun to have on? And your name came up, and I, I'd read your Literary Converts book. It was one of the last books I read before becoming Catholic. I found out Obi-Wan Kenobi, Alec Guinness, had become Catholic, and I was like, that's it. I'm done. And I thought, Joseph Pierce, though, he's a big deal. He'd never probably answer my phone call or email. Well, it turns out you did, and I am so grateful because you've been an extraordinary part of the Sunrise Morning Show family for years and years now, and I am just incredibly grateful for you, for your family, for everything you've done to help us out here. Well, thank you, Matt. Well, the feeling is actually mutual because I enjoy my uh, 10 or 15 minutes with with you folks every Friday morning. I look forward to it. And, you know, we listen to you anyway. Susanna's a great fan. Obviously, we probably discovered you because you reached out to me because we're not in your neck of the woods. We're in South Carolina. But, you know, Susanna listens to it on the radio every morning, uh, not just on Fridays. But in fact, she's not interested in listening to me. She's interested in listening to you. <laughs> this is the one time she tunes out, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> well, fact, she, she listens to me more than enough already. But she enjoys the banter between you. I love, And both of us love the dynamism of the show. There's a dynamic there. You've got that. that, that if you were setting out at the beginning to get this balance between uh, banter and local news, I mean, local sports, um, you've got the, uh, the the local news, local traffic, and then you interweave that with just some great guests talking about all different aspects of the faith. And you know your stuff yourself, you know, both you and Danny know your stuff. So, you know, these, it's not just an interview, it's a conversation with the, with the guests, which is which is wonderful. So I know we thoroughly enjoy it. We're fans. Well, I am... I'm just humbled at the the breadth of people we get to talk to. And the, as Anna mentioned last hour, half of this show is just a vanity project, an excuse for us to talk to our friends about the stuff we really want to talk about. <laughs> you know, it's kind of the fun of it. Um, but am I to understand that you have a poem to share, like a something to share for the membership drive? Is that is that correct? Yeah, I thought it'd be fun. I, I know we're in the midst of Lent, and we've been doing a Lent and Literature a series about um, – about the suffering and what have you that we should get from great literature. But I thought it might be fun to lighten things up with a bit of comic relief today. So well, let's do that. So here's here's the challenge I'm going to put out there. If you yeah. don't like uh, Joseph's poem and if you don't smirk, then you don't have to give. But if you do smirk, <laughs> at least smirk or or chuckle lightly to yourself, then uh, then you know you're getting something out of Catholic Radio, and then you'd have to give us a call at 513-731-7740 or give online at Sacred Heart Radio. Dot com or Venmo at Sacred Heart Radio. But if you don't chuckle, then you're off the hook. So, Joseph, <laughs> let's hear from that you. Puts, that, that puts the pressure on me. Maybe I should, get, should, should read it. <laughs> it's all about the delivery read, now. Perhaps so. I should read it all in the funny voice or something now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so this is actually, I, I, I edited a volume of poems called Poems Every Child Should Know. Uh, and there's a wonderful poem. It's one of, one of my favorites in the whole book by a poet called Alfred Noyes who was a convert to the faith, very famous poet in the first half of the 20th century. His poem, The Highwayman, is one of the best-known poems of the 20th century, and I recommend that as well. It's a longer narrative poem about a highwayman and his love. Um, but this is, a, this is a really charming poem. It's not very well known, and it's called um, Daddy Fell Into the Pond. <laughs> so you've already got me. 
<laughs> Everyone grumbled. The sky was grey. We had nothing to do and nothing to say. We were nearing the end of a dismal day, and there seemed to be nothing beyond. Then, Daddy fell into the pond. And everyone's face grew merry and bright, and Timothy danced for sheer delight. Give me the camera, quick, oh quick, he's crawling out of the duckweed. Click. Then the gardener suddenly slapped his knee and doubled up, shaking silently. And the ducks all quacked as if they were daft, and it sounded as if the old drake laughed. Oh, there wasn't a th thing that didn't respond when Daddy fed into the pond. That's good. Maybe there's not a listener that won't respond now after hearing you re <laughs> read Daddy fell into the pond. You know, it's... I, 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 there's so much out of the world that is to be sad and frustrated and anxious about. But my goodness, it is so such a relief to be able to be with Catholic friends and have wholesome laughter, Joseph. That is water in the desert to me. Well, thank you. I say that um, I think it's come up with really bad rhyme. Um, if you laughed at Daddy falling into the pond, it's time surely to the donor drive. You need to respond. There you go. I will have to check the meter on that one to make sure it lined up just right. Uh, but if you do want to respond, and if you appreciate Joseph Pierce, even his commentary on Premier League football, give us a call at 513-731-7740. Again, 513-731-7740. Give online at sacredheartradio.com or Venmo at Sacred Heart Radio. Joseph, I, had a, I, had a, I know you got a busy morning. I have one thing I wanted to throw your way uh because the nature of discourse in the usa in the present age uh is all about everybody responding to the last person who talked uh and here on the sunrise morning show and catholic radio in general uh well we we have segments on thomas more uh, we've been talking a lot about saint patrick we've been doing a series on a translated book by saint albert the great we've been doing a whole series with father augustine weta on stories from old monks we've been doing this series uh, with you on uh, literature, everything from Shakespeare to Tolkien and beyond, um, we get to be part of a of a much larger conversation. The world has a very short memory, but the church has a very long one. And you know, I'm reminded of what C.S. Uh, Lewis had to say about the importance of of reading old books when he talks about how uh, you know everybody's reading new stuff, but the new stuff. If you're an amateur, how are you supposed to know if this new stuff is good stuff? It hasn't proven the test of time, right? We don't even know how to put the new stuff in perspective because we haven't read the old stuff. Catholic Radio for me, Joseph, and, and especially conversations like yours and ours, uh, really helps me to put into perspective a lot of stuff that the whole world just kind of doesn't know how to talk about. Yeah, absolutely. I and mean, we have to realize you know, that uh, the, the Catholic Church, as G.K. Chesterton said, is the one continuous institution that's been thinking about thinking for 2,000 years. And when we realize that, you compare the depth. I mean, Chesterton also wrote a book called The Well and the Shallows. The well is the Catholic Church. It has life-giving water. It has depth. The shallows is everything else. So we get too involved in what's happening in the news on a, on a daily basis and what's topical out there, what's the latest fads and fashions or the latest political uh, intrigues. What we're really doing is partaking in a dust storm in a desert. You know, lots of movement with no, n no real life in it, no real depth in it. Now, we need to step out of that prayerfully and thoughtfully and spend some time in silence with uh, the, the richness of the church, 2,000 years of history, 2,000 years of heritage, a place where we can actually, it's like an oasis in the desert. And Catholic radio is like an oasis in the desert. You turn, you, you, you turn your dial, to use old-fashioned language, you know, from Sacred Heart Radio, see what else is on there, you'll see what I mean, that it's an oasis in the desert. And we have to make sure that life-giving water is available, which is why you know, I, I urge all of your listeners to support Sacred Heart Radio. Yeah, every time I turn around the dial, I hear people arguing about sports or uh, trying to sell me testosterone supplements or insurance, right? <laughs> I, got, I got enough of that in my world. I'm ready for some 
some formation, some uh, some perspective. And Catholic Radio, I'm so grateful for for giving me that. Joseph, I'm so grateful you could give us a little bit of your time this morning. Thank you again, and thank you for uh, reading. And again, if anybody chuckled, they're uh, they're now bound by their own honor to give us a call. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. God bless. And you can give us a call by picking up the phone or uh, getting the phone out of your pocket and dialing 513-731-7740. That's 513-731-7740. SacredHeartRadio.com is another way you can give. You can also give through Venmo at Sacred Heart Radio. We're back after this. It's 18 past. I'm Father Rob Jack. Join me this afternoon on Driving Home the Faith as we conclude our Sacred Heart Radio Lenten membership drive. Help us meet our goal of raising $120,000. I'll be joined by some of your favorite guests like Mike Aquilina as we discuss the importance of Catholic radio and helping people embrace their Catholic heritage. That's today at 4 on Sacred Heart Radio. You're on the road to Christ the King. Driving home the faith. Support for Sacred Heart Radio is from Bridgetown Finer Meats, presenting their gourmet fish dinner, available every Friday in Lent, featuring two delectable courses that change every week. Fresh gourmet seafood such as crab stuffed lemon sole with asparagus, parmesan crusted chili and sea bass with risotto, or salmon wellington. Every week offers a different dinner. Reservations are required and wine pairings are available. The menu is online at BridgetownFinerMeats.com. That's BridgetownFinerMeats.com. Support is from Solidarity HealthShare. Is inflation making you feel frustrated and out of control when it comes to your expenses? We have a solution. It's Solidarity HealthShare. With Solidarity HealthShare, you control what doctors you go to and how much you spend with pricing options that start as low as $384 for families. Take control of your health care and your budget with Solidarity HealthShare. 855-954-5688. Solidarity HealthShare. 855-954-5688. Support for Sacred Heart Radio is from Twin Dental of Cincinnati. Since 1986, twin brothers, doctors David and Michael Rothen have been providing superior dental care in a relaxed and comfortable setting for the entire family. The twin dental doctors utilize advanced dentistry techniques from sedation to implants and the latest in cosmetic options to preserve and beautify smiles. Twin Dental, located just off the I-275 exit at Hamilton Avenue. For a complimentary evaluation, 513-825-6111 and online at twindental.com. You can find a lot of different businesses on Sacred Heart Radio's Angels List, but there are some businesses that we still don't have on the list. Right now is the perfect opportunity for you to reach hundreds of thousands of listeners and be the first business of your kind on our list. If you specialize in child care, appliance repair, pest control, painting, roofing, handyman services, or carpet cleaning, I want to talk to you. Email me, Leah, at sacredheartradio.com, and let's get you on Sacred Heart Radio's Angels List. The Sunrise Morning Show continues. We are edging towards $60,000, getting closer and closer. With your help, you can give us a call to help us make our goal today uh, by just, again, picking up that phone, getting it out of your pocket, flipping it over from the table where it was maybe face down. 513-731-7740. Again, 513-731-7740 is the number to call. Make a gift of any amount. We're encouraging people who've not uh, ever given before to perhaps consider a $10 monthly donation. Uh, maybe if you're already given and you want to just give us a little boost here as we head towards the summer to offset the uh, natural expenses that will flow forth from that, uh, maybe $100 one time, $250 one time. Uh, I bet you there's somebody out there who's able to give $1,000 uh, one time to help us hit that goal. SacredHeartRadio.com is also where you can do that. Venmo at Sacred Heart Radio. Uh, Anna Mitchell, there's so many different uh, things that I can think about uh, in terms of like why I want to support Sacred Heart Radio, why I give every mm -hmm. pledge drive, which yep. some people might be like, that's weird. Uh, you're just, you work for the station and you're basically having your pay docked every time you have a pledge drive, which is even weirder because this is also when you and I work more than we usually work. Mm -hmm. So we work overtime. Yep. And give. And as a reward, we get our pay docked. Yeah. So. Uh, Amazing. Amazing. Well, Voluntarily, that just goes to show how much we believe in we are this mission. Absolutely. We are invested. Absolutely. We voluntarily come in, work much longer hours, and also surrender part of our pay paycheck to the cause. So 
somebody out there back our play, right? Come if on, you, guys. <laughs> yeah. If you, uh, if you want to join us, I mean, we're making sacrifices. We encourage you to make these sacrifices. We wouldn't be doing it if it, if it wasn't worth it. Uh, again, 513-731-7740. And uh, sacredheartradio.com to give. And Anna Mitchell, I say this all the time. Uh, you know, there are, there are different traps that one can fall into. There are uh, certainly people who have made a lot of money over the years and gotten a lot of hits and traffic from really keying in on controversies in the church or controversies in the world. Um, I mean, it is a full scale industry uh, to really appeal to people's outrage. And get them to uh, to get eyeballs. It's amazing. Like there are some channels out there that get lots and lots of hits. And then I talk to people like, "Did you see this?" And people are like, "Yeah, that was terrible." And, you know, that person you know had this really terrible take. I'm like, "You watched it too?" I'm like, "Yeah, we all watched it." We're like, "Did anybody who watched that thing agree with it, or did we all just watch it to see the train wreck of opinions that yeah. surrounded that piece of did outrage?" Did we all just watch it to get outraged ourselves? Are any of these people who got this person this you know? hundreds of thousands of hits actually fans of this opinion or fans of this story I, this is it's a whole industry based on outrage and we've been very careful i mean very careful here on the sunrise morning show mm -hmm. um and sometimes i think we do better sometimes there's probably room for improvement but our goal is to at least let you know what you need to know but to not dwell on these things or obsess over them or sensationalize them and appeal to uh, unhealthy levels of outrage or worry or anxiety because at the end of the day outrage and worry and anxiety are not the answer christ is the answer um so when i hear something on the news and i say this all the time anna mitchell i i look at it as, a, as my prayer request list and on catholic radio i have a mechanism that reminds me to treat this like a prayer request list I, I, this sometimes happens in conversations i don't know if this happens with you where Someone will make a complaint about the world, uh, you know, about the state of war in the world or politics in our country or problems in our church um, or problems in their own family. And, I mean, Father Rob will probably tell you this, too. You know, you could say, well, are you praying about this stuff mm -hmm. or are you just complain about it? Well, can I give you an example of, of how I try to foster that through news from a Catholic perspective? Do you say, Lord, hear our prayer at the end of every story? Because I kind of do. No, that's not what I do. <laughs> but um, let's look at the war going on between Israel and Hamas. Do you know how I change? We talk, we've talked before about how I often change the wording. I have a newswire, which um, for folks that aren't familiar with newswires, you're probably most familiar with like the Associated Press. You've heard of that. We have to su subscribe to one because we don't have a Sacred Heart Radio reporter embedded exactly. in Gaza. Exactly. Like I, I don't have time in the morning to go through all of the news and summarize it and write up my own stories about what's all going on. We don't have a White House correspondent here. So we subscribe to a newswire service similar to the Associated Press, which is too expensive. Um, and they send out, uh, you know, I'm, I'm looking at, at the page right now and I'm on a, you know, like one of the, they have like summaries of stories, the headlines. And so I can go in and, and basically copy and paste the story into what I want to be my newscast. This is also where we get many of the uh, the sound bites from reporters. The other place I go, of course, is Vatican News. Um, they have reporters that do uh, stories as well. But from my newswire, um, whenever you hear about, whenever they write about the war in Israel, um, in the Gaza Strip, it's um, always worded as, um, and sometimes you'll hear like if I if I haven't looked at the story close enough, sometimes I end up slipping up and and using the the way that they word it. But it they say um, between Israel and the Palestinian militant group Hamas. Now, when I'm on top of my game, uh, and I'm going through and I'm I'm going through with a fine tooth comb on on these news stories, that is the war in the Holy Land. Hmm. And that is a way that you will not hear described anywhere else but on 
Catholic Radio. When you hear Pope Francis praying for the war in the Holy Land, when you hear Pope Francis praying for martyred Ukraine, these are terms that you're not going to hear in the secular media. And I, I don't mean that to denigrate the secular media, although, you know, we could. Um, it's, it's to say that we are tuned in to a, a deeper purpose here on the Sunrise Morning Show on Catholic Radio. So, Anna Mitchell, can we do an can we do an exercise? First of all, I want to I want to put the uh, put the uh, the number out there, but I want to do an exercise related to your last story that you've been using in your kicker this morning, or oh, in your sure. in, in your headline mm-hmm. in your headlines. I want to I want to do a before and after wording experiment. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you want to give, because you appreciate us being able to to offer this perspective of prayer and. And, and and just our, bring our Catholic sensibilities to bear on on the headlines. Uh, then help us to keep doing that. Five one three seven three one seven seven forty. Again, five one three seven three one seven seven forty. Or uh, you can give online at sacredheartradio.com. You can Venmo us at Sacred Heart Radio. You mentioned that we have kind of an unprecedented thing that has happened uh, over the past day or so, where mm-hmm. for the first time ever, and I, I couldn't believe that this was the first time ever. That a sitting vice president had made an appearance at an abortion clinic. Uh, mm-hmm. Now, I saw some photos from the event, and there were signs up everywhere at the Planned Parenthood uh, that Vice President Harris was at in Minnesota, and none of them had the word abortion on them. Um, of course. But I wonder, did you have to do any editing of that story? I know you have to do a lot of editing on stories that are connected with the culture of life and the culture of death. Yes. Do you have a before and after? Um, sure. Let me find... Because I'd be very interested to know, uh, <laughs> like, because language matters, yeah, right. Uh, and, and this is something that we're going to get into big time once we get into Ken Craycraft's book. Because part of the reason that we feel so flat-footed um, when it comes to these questions is because we are arguing using the language of liberal modernism, and so we're already at a disadvantage because they've already set out the terms in which everything is going to be discussed. So even our attention to detail on the language is, is part of this part of this process. But do you have a before and after? Do you have it? Yeah. Do you want me to go sentence by sentence? Yeah, let's let's do before and after sentence by sentence. This is a, this is what if you wonder what Anna Mitchell why she gets into the office at if four o'clock. You wanna know in the what morning, you're paying for? Why does she go in at four AM? It's to go through stuff like this. Yeah. So go ahead. Okay. This is the newswire. Vice President Kamala Harris is speaking out against lawmakers who have rolled back abortion access across the country. My sentence. Vice President Kamala Harris has praised abortion providers and lashed out against lawmakers who have restricted abortion across the country. Second sentence. Harris toured a Planned Parenthood clinic in Minneapolis yesterday, becoming the first vice president to ever visit a clinic providing abortion services while in office. I didn't change that sentence. Then the vice president claimed many women, oh, this is my, sorry, I'm reading the wrong story. This is what she said. This is what the Newswire said. The vice president said, many women across the country are suffering following the Supreme Court's decision to overturn Roe v. Wade. I wrote, the vice president claimed many women across the country are suffering following the Supreme Court's decision. All right, I want, I want people Ruffy to catch Wade. this. I want people to catch the subtlety of what you just said and, and, and how subtle this stuff gets. So the first uh, version said what? The vice president says. And then many, the second version says. The vice president claimed. Bingo. Mm-hmm. Bingo. Yeah, it's. It is. It's subtle language like that that, um, I mean, even the in the, the, the opening sentence, the lead, Vice President Kamala Harris is speaking out against lawmakers who have rolled back abortion access. Hmm. So that puts her on the high ground and those who have rolled back abortion access on the low ground by the way the story is phrased. Just by the way the story is phrased. It sounds like the people who have done, who, who have, it sounds like the pro-lifers are attacking. Even, I good. mean, even um, more glaring was the the story 
<laughs> was the story yesterday uh, saying that she was about to go to this abortion clinic in Minneapolis. This is the the Newswire story from yesterday. I don't remember how I worded it. I don't have I don't have the copy anymore. But um, it says Kamala Harris will make history today when she becomes the first vice president to visit an abortion clinic while in office. Harris is expected to tour a Planned Parenthood clinic in Minneapolis and speak to health care providers there. Hmm. That is uh, making the connection in your brain that abortion is health care. Exactly. I mean, these are the kinds of things that. You know, it's frustrating. It's a battle. Uh, we've we've you know found ourselves on both high and low ends of the battle uh, when it comes to trying to promote a culture of life. So often, the language gets determined by the secular progressive uh, faction uh, of of the 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 abortion rights movement that is trying to establish universal rights to abortion and demonize anyone who would put any restrictions on them. And so. And this goes back to that question of of the language of individual rights and all of it. We have we have a hard road ahead, a- and if we only have the perspective of responding to the last thing that somebody said in a press conference in front of an abortion facility, if we don't have the full foundation of what it means to live a culture of life, what it fully means to be a human being, we're always going to be on our back foot uh, in the match. Well, and just even let's not even go that deep with it just to have uh, objective language in our news. Um, I, it's, it's a, as you said, you used, it used a great to be, word. It's it used to be subtle. a textbook that you, if somebody said something, you would say they claimed it. Yeah. Right? It's, and it's, now it's very subtle. You say they said it. And yet, yeah. um, and, and something that if you're just tuning in and listening, you may not even notice that, um, that there's anything. Well, that's because I was trained in journalism school you know they i know what the language needs to be to be an objective reporter we are objective when it comes to uh to language when it comes to these stories because these stories speak for themselves i don't need to go into outrain outrageous language about what kamala harris did at a planned parenthood i can use objective language and you and know still tell the story you know what the story is. Yeah. I don't need to dumb it down for you. And you know you. it because you're listening need... in the context of everything else we say at Sacred Heart right. Radio. And I don't I don't need to uh, lead you to believe something because I trust you as a Catholic listening to the news that you know I don't I don't need to go into that incendiary language in these newscasts. And I hope you know, that this is something that you are willing to support. Help me, you know, I need my newswire because I need to, I need the information in front of me, but I'm doing a lot of work to make sure that, that you are getting the straight news. More so- than you know. You have no idea how much work. <laughs> so every now and then someone will be like, I can't believe Anna Mitchell just read something that somebody said. I'm like, would you rather not know Yeah. that, that, that I do Kamala a lot Harris, of... Harris said this in front of him. You, we need yeah. to know. This is why we have Laura Streetman on every week, right? We need to know what people are saying. We that's need to one understand. of the other biggest things that I do in my news um, is, you know, and, and what is uh, such a benefit of having a news wire, even though I'm often pulling out my hair, I'll send Matt, I'll copy and paste I'm full pulling out stories. My hair too. Yeah, all that hair that you have. It's all gone. And, it's all gone. Um, and, and, you know, but it's so nice to to have something like this that we need to pay for. This is one of the things that you're helping us pay for when you make a donation. And give us a call to do that, 513-731-7740, or go online to sacredheartradio.com and click on Donate or via Venmo at Sacred Heart Radio. But this newswire allows me the time to then go and find direct quotes from these these people who are making the news so that you can hear what they said because i think that that says more about uh about the story than me coming up with my own opinion about it it's not about my opinion it's about giving you the full story 
And so when uh, when I quoted Harris and I had to go, I actually had to go to the Catholic News Agency to get the quotes from her. Um, and I don't have which this is another of, level, right? Another level. Another of, level of, of, of this research, is going right. out and 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 looking at at what the Catholic news is out there, and um, yeah, I mean, I am so grateful to those of you that have given so far to to allow me to do this work because uh, as a journalist, um, I look out at the journalism landscape now. And I'm so grateful that I can be a real journalist, that I can operate in service of the truth. And we know that that truth is with a capital T and that I don't have to worry about masking the truth or trying to lead you into this or that political opinion. I am operating in service of the truth uh, through the authority of the church. And, well, I, I'm yeah. so glad you said capital T because there's a lot of unsung and behind the scenes work that that uh, that you and I both do in other capacities in trying to help other people. I mean, we're, we're sometimes we're crowdsourcing this stuff behind the scenes with other people who work in the media. Uh, people may not realize that a lot of times when they're hearing news minutes and news links from Teresa Tamio, those are written by Anna Mitchell, yeah, right? I like like these are yeah. because you know not everybody's got all the time to do all these. I mean, we're all doing our best and we're all working together uh with one another to try and do everything we can uh to be representative of 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 what we should be representative of as as catholics and and again the battle lines are always going to be shifting but this goes back to what we were talking about with joseph pierce earlier our perspective is not rooted in what are the goals and aims of a particular political campaign our goals and perspectives are they're rooted in the truth of the human person as the church has thought about it over the past 20 centuries and that stuff that's the perspective that i need i i mean i can go back and forth on a news article and figure out one politician's argument against another politician's argument and go insane i want to know what is a human being how are we made and what does that mean for me as a catholic Mm -hmm. when i enter into these conversations and i'm so I'm so grateful. Every morning, I feel like I get a chance to get a refreshed perspective on that. Can you I? You know, give I get one, off the air and I read the rest example? of the news. Yeah, I, I was just going to say, I get off the air and I read the rest of the news, and I get frustrated. And by the end of the day, sometimes I'm like, just like, ah, the world is irredeemable. But then I wake up and I have a couple of hours to talk to my friends, who are philosophers and theologians, and and uh, you know, activists in the pro life movement. And I hear hear their voices on the Sunrise Morning Show, and I'm like, okay, we're we're not. We're not at the end here. Yeah. I mean, not to open up a whole other can of worms here, but just one other example from recent news um, with the frenzy over in vitro fertilization, mm. um, which the the secular media has no idea no. how to Actually, it's been how shocking how much this. conservative evangelical media has had no yeah, idea. Yeah, they have this. no idea how to handle this. And one of the things that I have to add into all of the news stories is a little explainer as to why IVF is, quote unquote, in danger because of this Alabama Supreme Court ruling about uh, unborn life having um, a right to life in in wrongful death suits, um, wrongful death of a minor suits. And that little line that I add at the end of, of many of those stories is because in vitro fertilization regularly involves the destruction of human embryos. Now, what I could also add, by the way, is, um, but it, it doesn't necessarily um, deal with the, the, the Alabama Supreme Court ruling, is in vitro fertilization regularly involves the destruction of human embryos and the indefinite freezing of human embryos. And that's all you need to hear to know what the truth of the matter is there. But that's, that's something, something that you don't that hear you and it, get on Catholic radio. Yeah, we have the perspective. Evangelicals are just sort of waking up a little bit to the dangers of, of IVF because of this Alabama case. But Catholics have been holding the line. We've known it. We've been holding the line. And now a lot of those evangelical friends are contacting me and saying, what does the Catholic Church have to say about this? Mm-hmm. 
513-731-7740. Give us a call and support this work and make it available to anyone that's tuning in, scrolling through the dial, 513-731-7740, online, sacredheartradio.com. Click Donate or Venmo at Sacred Heart Radio. We're back right after this. Carmel Manor, a member of the Carmelite system, has been providing quality care in Fort Thomas, Kentucky for 75 years. A few select premium rooms overlooking the Ohio River are available for immediate occupancy. Our personal care setting may be just the thing if you need some support with daily tasks, medications, and meals. For more information, call 859-781-5111 for personalized assistance. Quality Catholic care just 10 minutes from Cincinnati. Carmel Manor. The difference is love. Looking for a way to grow closer to your faith with your family this summer? Try a Holy Family Fest at Catholic Family Land, located 20 minutes from Steubenville, Ohio. Family activities along with mass, rosary, confession, and guest speakers create the perfect blend of excitement and ample time spent renewing your faith to allow life-changing encounters with the Lord. Financial assistance is available for families in need. Register online at afc.org. Sacred Heart Radio is blessed to have the support of Larkin Cobb Chevrolet Buick GMC in Eaton, Ohio, offering a wide range of new and used cars, trucks, and SUVs with on-site financing. Larkin Cobb, close to Eaton, Richmond, Dayton, and Brookville. On the web at LarkinCobb.com. Back with us now on the Sunrise Morning Show is Father Hezekiah Carnazzo from the Institute of Catholic Culture here to preview the readings for the fifth Sunday of Lent. Father, this time next week, we're going to be talking about Palm Sunday. Can you believe it? I know. I can't believe it. The fifth Sunday. Wow. Where the journey is coming to a conclusion. Pascha, Easter, the resurrection is before us. Yeah, but we've got some excellent uh, deep readings to get into this weekend for the fifth Sunday of Lent. And uh, the first reading this week is, I know, one of your favorite passages from Jeremiah chapter 31 particularly verse 31, Jeremiah 31, 31. The days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. Going on from there, Father, can you talk about the significance of this passage just in general, but but particularly why would why would this be an important passage to know in Lent? Sure. Well, it's extremely important because This was one of the passages that the the Church of the Old Testament looked to in expectation to find out what was coming, right? And what were they to look for? And when you hear the prophets say this phrase, you're going to, you just said the days are coming. Those are clear words that indicate when the Messiah comes, this is what it's going to look like. Now he talks about a new covenant. Of course, the covenant is the joining of two people as one, right? We're talking about the marriage covenant, the man and the woman become one flesh. So this new covenant is going to draw God's people into covenant union with God. And it's going to be, it, it says, it's going to be a lasting covenant, not one that's going to be broken by the people, because it's the law of God is going to be written on the heart of God's people. It means it's not going to be written on stone like it was in the days of Moses, like we look at a, uh, a stop sign or something like that, or some law written by the government. Right. Whether I'm going to follow it or not is in question. But this one is going to be the driving force of my life now. It's going to be who I am in my relationship with the Lord. Isn't that beautiful? It's so beautiful. And and something, you know, we, we talk in here a lot about the fact that you and I do this by Bi- this Bible study, hour long Bible study with the Institute of Catholic Culture on the Sunday Mass readings. And and you made this point in our Bible study for for this upcoming fifth Sunday of Lent about how another reason why this covenant is not going to be broken is because of the two people who are entering into this covenant, which would be the yeah. father and the son. That's in, exactly in previous attempts of restoration of God's people and their relationship with our Heavenly Father, of course, we were the ones that walked away from the relationship like an unfaithful spouse. But in this case, the relationship is going to be established, yes, between the Father and the Son, but we can even say 
the relationship is established by the son in the son because now the the relationship between God and man is going to be joined together in the eternal person of the word never more to be broken because he's in the unchanging second person of the holy trinity man and god joined together in the person of jesus christ jesus is the new covenant it is in his flesh that the law is written because it is his will which now is walking in human flesh it is his will which is now directing human nature this is why jesus is the fulfillment of the law and in him now the new covenant is established, and that is, by the way, by extension, the reason why our baptism is so important, because it incorporates us into this reality. Mm -hmm. I want to get to the gospel, but I can't skip the opportunity to talk about the responsorial psalm and, and Psalm 51. If we talk about writing on a piece of paper, that paper needs to be clean, right? So if God is going to write on our hearts, we need for him to create in us a clean heart as the response tells us. Exactly, and this is our, our Lenten journey is all about this, right? Preparing our hearts for this new life which God is going to give us, a new life given, of course, to the newly baptized on, on Easter Sunday, and by extension to all of us who renew our baptismal promises and our, our renew our, our relationship with the Lord, create a clean heart in me, O oh God, I desire this relationship with you. Write your law on my heart because my heart is now prepared for this new life which you, which you desire to give me. Absolutely. So now looking at the gospel, John chapter 12, it starts off by saying, some Greeks who had come to worship at the Passover feast came to Philip. They want to see Jesus. Philip goes to Andrew to ask him, and so they both go and tell Jesus, hey, these Greeks want to see you. And Jesus' answer to them is so strange to me. He says, this is what he says immediately. Jesus answered them, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Mm. What? These Greeks coming to him leads him to say his hour has come to be glorified? What is this all about, yeah. Father? Well, this is, this is many things you would say about this, but most, most important here in the Gospel of John, when we talk about the Greeks, we talk about those in the diaspora, those who are wandering, those who are lost, those who are at a far distance from the house of God. And so now the covenant re restoration is taking place in the age of the Messiah, in which not only are the Jews, not only is Israel being rejoined to the king, right, and coming into the uh, restoration of the Davidic king, but now the whole world is coming to him. And this theme of world is so fundamentally important. It's going to come out here in this gospel when Jesus talks about the ruler of this world being cast out, the devil, right? Satan is being cast out. So there is a new king now established, and that which was formerly in darkness in the gospel of John, the world, is now coming to Christ as the king on the cross, which is why the second part of this, this gospel so beautiful and so important, in which Jesus talks about whoever loves his life will lose it. And whoever hates his life in this world will preserve it. We are made for love. We are made to pour our life out for the beloved. And this is what Jesus is going to do for us on the cross. He's going to show us the depth and the breadth of his love for us. He pours his life out for us. And we are called to do this reality. What is the law of God? But God's way of life and his way of life is love. And we are called to be incorporated into this reality in which we live a life of self-giving love. That in giving of our life, in losing of our life, we actually discover what our life is all about because we are made in the image and likeness of God who is revealed to us upon the cross. Each one of us, then, is called to carry our cross for no one will rise from the dead who has not first died with Christ. We've been talking to Father Hezekiah Carnazzo. And Father, if listeners want to check out our Bible study at the ICC or... Uh, check out what's going on over there in terms of live events and the like where can they find you institute of catholic culture.org linked at sunrise morning show.com we are in the midst of sacred heart radio's lenten membership drive and we need your support to keep people like father hezekiah carnazzo on the air on a weekly basis getting us ready for mass each weekend 513-731-7740 can you Spare 10 bucks a month, have it taken out of your credit card, 513-731-7740.
seven seven forty. Go online to sacredheartradio.com and click donate or over Venmo at Sacred Heart Radio. Thank you so much. Name that saint coming up next. Support for Sacred Heart Radio is from Dr. Robert Berger at Beacon Orthopedics and Sports Medicine. Dr. Berger has been recognized by Cincinnati Magazine nearly every year over the past 20 years as one of the top physicians in orthopedic surgery, and he serves as team physician for Xavier University, Mount St. Joseph University, and LaSalle High School. Dr. Berger treats patients of all ages at the Beacon West office on Harrison Avenue and on the east side at Cincinnati Sports Club. For more information, 513-354-3700, online at beaconortho.com. Support for Sacred Heart Radio is from Rose Automotive, serving the Hamilton area with a wide selection of pre-owned cars, trucks, and SUVs. Rose Automotive, celebrating over 30 years of automotive excellence. On Erie Highway in Hamilton, roseautomotivegroup.com. Support for Sacred Heart Radio is from Fred Espenchide Plumbing. For plumbing and remodeling, Fred brings 55 years of experience to his work. Licensed in Ohio and Kentucky. Fred Espenchide, your pro-life plumber. 859-441-0950. 859-441-0950. All are precious in God's sight, no matter our age, race, ability, or residence. Yet many lives are threatened, especially in the womb. Cincinnati Right to Life works to protect the good gift of life at every age and every stage. For more information, go to CincinnatiRightToLife.org. Are you looking for peace? Longing for joy? Want to meet the giver of all goodness? God is calling the laity to bring Ignatian prayer into the suffering world. Work for the new evangelization. Go to lordteachmetopray.com. Order your free digital training and manual. Find true happiness and everlasting joy. Go to lordteachmetopray.com and click on the red button today. It's free. Approved by the USCCB. Support for the Sunrise Morning Show is from Visiting Angels. Visiting Angels provides experienced, compassionate care to millions of aging adults nationwide by keeping them safe and healthy in the comfort of their own home. Whether it's a short break for caregivers or for long-term assistance, Visiting Angels provides hygiene, meals, light housework, companionship, and more. And services are available up to 24 hours per day. Visiting Angels, online at visitingangels.com. That's visitingangels.com. Franchise opportunities available. We are approaching the end of our 8 o'clock hour. We got one more hour of the Sunrise Morning Show. It's like a bonus hour. We normally don't do these things. We do them during membership drives. And it's because we have a goal of $120,000. We're trying to reach it to help cover our budget and make sure that we're able to be in a good spot heading into the summer when many of you go on vacation. Uh, if we get, uh, let's see, I just want to do the math here real quick. If we get 12 people to call in and make $100 donations or give online a $100 donation or at Venmo, uh, then that will put us to the $55,000 mark, and that would be awesome. So if you are able right now to give a $100 gift while we're heading into this break, maybe you just got out of Mass, give us a call at 513-731-7740. That's 513-731-7740. You can make a $100 gift right now at sacredheartradio.com, or it's very easy via Venmo. Just look us up at Sacred Heart Radio. I want to try and get to 55000 during the break, and that's very possible that 12 of you call in and give $100 gifts. We got another full hour of the Sunrise Morning Show ish. It's like our little bonus hour. That's coming up after the break. We will see you on the other side. It is three minutes till. Why wait in endless lines at the pharmacy when Brozard Pharmacy, a proud supporter of Sacred Heart Radio, can fill your prescriptions in a timely manner with high quality. Brozard Pharmacy, fast, friendly service without the wait at brozartpharmacy.com. Fish is back at Arby's. Just in time for Lent, two for $6 Arby's crispy fish sandwich hangs over the sides and is served on a sesame seed bun with lettuce and tartar sauce. Or step up to Arby's Crispy King's Hawaiian Fish Deluxe Sandwich. It's delicious wild-caught Alaskan pollock, lightly breaded, cooked to crispy perfection, and served on a King's Hawaiian bun with lettuce, tomato, natural cheddar, and tartar sauce. Arby's is proud to support Sacred Heart Radio. Catholic Engaged Encounter Weekends are a marriage preparation program led by married couples and a priest or deacon. What makes this marriage prep program unique is you will have two days as a couple to delve into important subjects that will affect your relationship together for the rest of your lives. 
more time for prayer and reconciliation, and closing the weekend with Mass. More information is at cincinnati-covington.engagedencounter.com. That's cincinnati-covington.engagedencounter.com. Wimberg Landscaping, a proud supporter of Sacred Heart Radio, has been beautifying properties for over 40 years. Wimberg offers professional one-stop landscaping services from initial design and installation of all plant materials and hardscapes to ongoing maintenance, including lawn service, leaf and snow removal. Wimberg Landscaping, 513-271-2332 or on the web at wimberglandscaping.com. That's wimberglandscaping.com. You rely on your car, so rely on the experts at Fort Mitchell Garage, a proud supporter of Sacred Heart Radio. They can do it all from brakes, tires, and heating and cooling to towing and collision repair and more. Fort Mitchell Garage on Dixie Highway in Park Hills. On the web at fortmitchellgarage.com. Pregnancy Center West is committed to protecting the unborn by encouraging women to see and choose the beauty of life while offering practical assistance for them and their families. Donate securely online at supportpcw.org. That's supportpcw.org. A Lenten prayer. Almighty Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, you sent your Son to die on a cross so that through the obedience of one man, estrangement might be dissolved for all men. Guide our minds by his truth and strengthen our lives by the example of his death that we may live in union with you in the kingdom of your promise. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. For Sacred Heart Catholic Radio, this is Father Benedict Okensola. This is Archbishop Dennis Schnur from the Archdiocese of Cincinnati. Thank you for listening to Sacred Heart Catholic Radio. 740 WNOP Newport, 910 WPFB Middletown, or get the app, stream, podcast, and more at sacredheartradio.com. The Sunrise Morning Show continues, and it wouldn't be an hour of Sunrise Morning Show-ish stuff unless we prayed at least a little bit to kick things off. And since the Feast of St. Patrick is this weekend, uh, every hour I've been kicking off today with a portion of the breastplate of St. Patrick, so I'm going to do just another section of it right now, if you would be willing to join me. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, I arise today through a mighty strength, the invocation of the Trinity— through belief in the threeness, through confession of the oneness of the creator of creation. I arise today through God's strength to pilot me, God's might to uphold me, God's wisdom to guide me, God's eye to look before me, God's ear to hear me, God's word to speak for me, God's hand to guard me, God's shield to protect me, God's host to save me from snares of devils, from temptation of vices, from everyone who should wish me ill afar and near. I arise today through a mighty strength, the invocation of the Trinity, through belief in the threeness, through confession of the oneness of the creator of creation. Amen. St. Patrick, pray for us. Uh, God's word to speak for me. That's kind of what we ask for here every day on Sacred Heart Radio. Uh, God has given us his word, and we are here uh, to just try the best we can to be a channel for that so that you can hear it um, so that you cannot hear something smart that me or Anna Mitchell has to say because there's only so much of that right it's got very strong limits on it but we want you to hear God's word and that's the point of what we do here if you want to support this mission this ministry this apostolate uh, we've been going on in the Sacred Heart Radio family in the Cincinnati area for 23 years, all the way back to 2001. A lot has happened since then. A lot has happened in your life since then. A lot's happened in mine, that's for sure. And we're still here. We're still a voice in this community. To keep us on the air here, give us a call at 513-731-7740. Again, 513-731-7740. Some of you just got out of mass, or maybe you just got to the parking lot where you are about to go into work, or whatever it happens to be. You may have a free minute now. You can give us a call there at 513-731-7740. Maybe you can give online, sacredheartradio.com. It might even be easier than that if you got the Venmo app. Just look us up at Sacred Heart Radio. Uh, I would love to see some of those $100 gifts come in, maybe even if somebody's willing to give a $1,000 gift to really push us towards our goal. We're about halfway towards our $120,000 goal and the pledge drive ends today. So we need your help. Uh, I would love to be able to say, ah, just give tomorrow or give next next week. But the deadline is looming. 
poor Father Rob Jack's going to look at the totals and say, why didn't the Sunrise Morning Show raise more money? Bill Levitt or Ryan Lopez, who've got to, you know, be on the radio later, are going to say, wow, Sunrise Morning Show, you didn't pull your weight. We're $11 away from 54000 I happen to know that Sunrise Morning Show listeners are the best listeners of the entire Sacred Heart Radio lineup. It's true. But I need them to prove that. Actually, if we're at 53000 then we need $11. $11. 53989 So can somebody so Venmo us $11, $11. right now? Just of all the people asking you for money today, the Sunrise Morning Show asking you for $11 is going to be like one of the lowest <laughs> asks. I just got a text from Verizon saying, hey, we just automatically took out your money. <laughs> mm-hmm. And it was less, it, well, it was significantly more than $11. I got that. I got that one yesterday. Well, here's the other thing. It's payday. And I don't know how you treat payday, but sometimes on payday I get excited. I'm like, hey, wow. party time. Maybe uh, maybe I'll just see if there's anything on clearance at Bass Pro Shops. <laughs> yeah, just to see. Just see. But you know what? I'm not going to do that today. I made a gift yesterday. I, I may make another one today. Nice. Because, you know, on payday, you've got a little bit of wiggle room. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you Sometimes it's a little tighter. Sometimes it's a little looser. But I can guarantee you that there's some other people out there who don't have to worry about the payday cycle because they've kind of gotten to a place of financial establishment, and they got a little bit in the tank. And that person may be willing to call right now and make a gift of $1,000, $2,500, maybe even $5,000. We lean a lot on the $10 givers, but there are some people out there who I know have means, and I would just encourage any of them listening right now, if you appreciate the value, if, if you want to cover for the people who can't give right now because they're driving to an actual job or taking their kids to an actual school, uh, then help them out. Help prepare the working and family-raising generation of Catholics to have the Catholic radio resource they want in their community by giving us a call 513-731-7740 donate online sacredheartradio.com venmo us at sacred heart radio we passed it anna mitchell somebody Woo. gave actually i think somebody must have given about 40 dollars because we're oh 50 nice we're right on by sweet thank you thank how you how you feeling this person. hour anna mitchell it's been oh. a long week you know i'm well i'm always tired well, some of y'all may like, realize I wake that up at 345 in the morning and I have four kids. So. And last night you were doing an Institute of Catholic Culture webinar oh, yeah. until like 930 at Nine, night. Yeah, like I didn't go to bed until, yeah. I was in Ohio for the first half of the week working about 16-hour days, shuttling people back and forth and producing the journey home. And yet, we and yet are here, here and we are excited because we want to you to become a member of the Sacred Heart Radio family. And we are so excited by the, you know, I need to get an updated printout of uh, of folks who have given. Oh, how many and, new people? And I would love to know how many new members of the Sacred Heart family we have because it's so important. I mean, Matt was just, I mean, he was throwing out all kinds of huge numbers. Um, you know, can you give $5,000? Please do. Please call in and give $5,000 right now, 513-731-7740. I know there are those out there listening right now who could do that. Um, But I am so grateful to those of you that are stepping out and saying, you know what, I can. I can spare 10 bucks a month and give that to Sacred Heart Radio, have that automatically deducted from my credit card or my bank account like I do for, you know, Netflix or Disney Plus or whatever. Um, I can I can subscribe to listen to Sacred Heart Radio, even though we will never charge you to listen to us and and hope that in return you will pray for us and hope that in return you are telling others to access Sacred Heart Radio as well and grow the listening family every day that you can tell somebody about Sacred Heart Radio. But right now we're asking your fi- your financial support. So can you spare 10 bucks each month? And That'd if be you need to $120 in a year. You wouldn't feel it that that yeah. that heavily. And if you need to make a little bit if you need yeah. to make a little bit of a sacrifice, I would encourage you to do that because I mean, we are in the Lenten season, but it is a Catholic thing to make sacrifices in order to do good. Because we know that we are storing up treasures in heaven. 
And so you can do that by making a $10 a month donation that you probably won't even notice if you set it up to be a persevering gift that automatically comes out of your credit card or your bank account. 513-731-7740. 513-731-7740. Online, sacredheartradio.com. There's a big green Donate Now button that you can press, and then you can also give over Venmo at Sacred Heart Radio. Matt, we've got uh, Travis. He's only known as Travis here on the Sunrise (laughs) Morning Show because Matt can't remember the last name Smith. That's that's not true. That's not true. Smith. It's like the hardest name to remember, right? I just felt Look like, at him hey, looking snazzy in his Sacred oh, Heart Radio So Travis shirt. is almost never in front of the camera because he's, he's always, always behind, behind the camera. It. Yeah. Look at that dark brown beard. Yeah. You know, that dark <laughs> dark brown hair. Matt's I jealous. Miss, looking like uh, a shaved a weasel. Little jealous. I, I missed the man bun uh, uh, event yesterday. So I you're not kind quite of, long enough for a man bun. I was kind of pleased by that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've seen you at to... certain times of year where you could have done a man bun. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 He cuts it all off. I get my yearly haircut in January. I sent you photos because you, you, Travis, you had sent me something yesterday. There was a lot of hair discourse because Paul Lockman's, you know, uh, always rocking the mullet. It seems uh, Ryan Lopez is a little shaggy these days. I am never shaggy, at least not on the not on. I don't have a forehead. I have a five head. <laughs> so uh, I have like a six or seven head. Uh, but uh, you asked, you said somebody would be willing to donate uh, if, if I could provide a picture of myself with like a lot of hair. Uh, unfortunately, during the time that I had most of my hair, it was pre smart smartphone era. And I was kind of like a vagabond playing <sighs> rock and roll shows all over weird parts of Kentucky and uh florida so i don't have many of those but i have a couple it was just an idea i had since we were all in the well, hair i sent yesterday. you some yeah i got them so if anybody wants to donate to see uh matt on on screen with uh hair we'll put it up on the we, youtube we channel put on the youtube channel yeah neat you gotta put a number <laughs> maybe we'll put a number make on it. It. you uh, know in if honor you of my to... five head a $500 donation. Ooh. If you go to sacredheartradio.com, you'll see on the front page, um, you know, like the show notes are front and center there. And I don't know if people realize this, but right now it's kind of a, um, what's the word I'm looking for? There, there'll be different thumbnail pictures of the Sunrise Morning Show if you refresh the page or you go at a different time. So right now, because I'm at sacredheartradio.com and there's a picture of Matt sitting in the studio when he came to visit us in December. But if I hit refresh, now it's a picture of Matt and me walking down the street in downtown Cincinnati, um, you know, looking like we're really enjoying each other's looks company. from everybody that we meet. Yeah. Um, and and so when you hit refresh, you can do that. We should put the picture of Matt yeah, in one of those like thumbnails. Slip it in as a slide, like see. Or maybe see we'll you know subtly. find some baby pictures of us to put in that slider now. Oh, that's um, brutal. You know something like that. Well, anybody we can, wants we to donate money. to make that happen, five one three seven three one seven seven forty. We're into all of these little premiums that we can <laughs> laugh about. Matt well, so, with hair. So 513-731-7740 is the number to call. We have volunteers who can uh, take your call. And if you have a story of uh, where you were before you discovered Sacred Heart Radio and where you are now as a work in progress since you discovered Sacred Heart Radio, I want to know those stories. I would love to share some of those stories. Oh, like and Travis's? Like, Well, this is a setup. This, yeah. is, a, this is a total setup. Right. Uh, SacredHeartRadio.com. You can give as well. And there's some notes you can sometimes put into the donation uh, that share a little bit about, you know, where you were before you discovered Sacred Heart Radio and where you've come and where where you're at since. Uh, But, you know, Travis is so much fun to have in the Sacred Heart Radio team. He does. I, I talk about him as though all he ever does is like push play on the YouTube channel. He does a lot of things. <laughs> he does a lot of things around here. And I'm so grateful that he's been part of this team. And Travis, I know we've all got stories, and I'm not going to ask you to belabor yours, but you certainly have like a way to say like where you were before like Catholicism got on your radar, and where things have gotten since you've discovered Catholic Radio and this family. And and I don't know about 
anybody else, but I'm grateful for you. I appreciate that, man. I'm grateful for you, too. Uh, you and it. it. Here it goes again. Oh, you don't... I don't even have to talk. And uh, <laughs> uh, the waterworks start. Because, uh, you know, um, and I'm grateful for what God has done in my life, um, first and foremost. Um, I look back, and I, I probably should have been dead at one point. Mm. You know, uh, being addicted to drugs and alcohol and being in, in that kind of lifestyle. Um, still knowing that God loved me, but I just uh, was making all the wrong choices, you know. Um, and uh, God picked me up. He met me right where I was and uh, reminded me that he never left me and the promises that he said to me as a child still existed. Um, you know, we're, we're coming up on St. Patrick's Day and I, uh, you know, the topic of where was I before Catholic radio um, uh, and, and 2020, um, just out of COVID, just graduating media school, um, I remember it was December 2020, and I'm sitting in Michigan at St. Patrick's uh, Catholic Church um, for an encounter ministry conference. Uh, it was a lot smaller than their usual conferences, so it was very intimate. Um, and uh, if anybody knows who Father Patrick Gano is, uh, he is an amazing father in the Detroit area. Um, they call him Father Joy or Father Child. You know, he, he's just this bundle of energy and, and joy. And uh, he was doing um, adoration that night. Uh, and I remember he brought out the monstrous. And from the moment it came out, I couldn't look at him, Jesus, in the monstrous without my eyes uh, watering, you know, perspiring, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, my friend next to me um, noticed that. And when the procession started, um, I locked eyes with the monstrous. And I watched everywhere it went, he went. And... Um, my friend said, do you want to get closer? And I was like, yes. So he moved me into the aisle where we knew that father would be walking past. And I watched people uh, get eyesight restored like they had uh, blurry vision. And because the monstrous came by and they touched it, uh, their eyesight was restored. Um, but when father got to me, I just convulsed, started crying convulsingly, and all I could do was fall on my knees, face down on the ground. And the father stopped, and he put his hand on my shoulder, and he said, you're redeemed. You are forgiven. And he just kept saying that over and over again. For like two minutes, people said. He's like, he stopped with you forever. And... and out of a whole church of people, I had that moment. Jesus gave me that moment. You know, that's what Jesus does in a whole room of people. It doesn't matter where you've been, what you've gone through. He'll meet you right there. But it's a posture. I found myself in a posture that I usually wouldn't be in. I had to be ready. I had to be open. You know, there's somebody who's driving right now who needed to hear that, that exact set of sentences. <laughs> uh, and there's always somebody driving who needs to hear exactly those kind of words. Um, who maybe hasn't even heard those words, uh, maybe their only impression of church is, this is a place I don't belong. Maybe their only impression of church is, um, not for me, only for smart people, or only for gullible people. Uh, you know, people have weird ideas about the church. Or maybe for only people who've never screwed up. Um, or me, maybe maybe uh, testimonies are only for people who have really fallen far and had less rock-bottom experience. The church is made up of all of us. Um, 
the stories are the stories of us all. Some of us have gone way off the path. Some of us have, you know, tripped down the path and haven't stumbled too far. Some of us feel unworthy to even step foot back into the church. Uh, some of us feel like we've done stuff that can't be forgiven. Um, but having a resource like this and having the real people involved in it, and that's, I mean, I'm going to, I'm trying to not, not become like a big baby myself, Travis, <laughs> because I know pieces of your story that you've shared and, and some of the things that have happened with you. Like, this is not some abstract, like, we have to go from this argument to this argument, and that's how the world will be converted. There's people. We're people. Like, I'm a guy. You're a guy. Like, the people listening are human beings with human wounds and human experiences. And we're not just, like, trying to get somebody from, like, this set of intellectual propositions to this other set of intellectual propositions. Like, it's not like Jesus goes to the man born blind and says, well, why don't I explain to you the Talmud? And then at the end of it, <laughs> you know, we'll open your eyes. No, he just touches him, right? He just touches him. Uh, he spits on the ground even in, like, this really raw way. Like, and I think sometimes we, we put it into an argument, we put it into a program and think that that's how the world will be converted. Uh, but that's not how that's not how most of us actually get converted. It's the weird stuff. It's those moments that are like, they're either pre-rational or they're like beyond rational or there's something else that's going on. And sometimes it's not an argument. Sometimes it's just a phrase. Like, you are redeemed is not an argument. It's just a phrase. It's just a phrase. And the ability to put those phrases out is like, you just never know which one of those is going to be the one that hits somebody between the eyes when they're driving on the Norwood lateral whenever it's open. <laughs> you know, you just never know. Yeah. You never know. Um, it's the stories, Matt. I mean, think about how chicken soup for the soul is such an industry. Because There's not people... a story in Chicken the Soup for the Soul that was as good as what Travis just exactly. shared. Exactly. <laughs> right? I mean, this is what I'm saying. I mean, this is the... Um, this is the business that we're in is telling the story because Travis's story is our story because we're members of the body of Christ. And so when, when one person is redeemed, we all are redeemed. When one person suffers, we all suffer. When one person is forgiven, we're all forgiven. I mean, it's, when we, one cell in the body heals, it doesn't just benefit the cell, right? It benefits the body. The body. Right. And Matt, you made a good point. Um, you don't have to understand what's happening. You know, I'm not Catholic, so I don't understand a lot of... I'm learning, thanks to Catholic Radio and our guests that we have on Catholic Radio. Um, but I'm learning and I'm reading the catechism and I'm doing, uh, you know, all of this stuff to, to really understand what it is... Before I, you know, before I jump two feet, you know, in, uh, I want to know. But uh, you don't have to know everything for God to, to, to come to you. Uh, you know, um, one other thing I'd like to share is in that same event, um, I was very confused and, and uh, about the devotion to Mary. And, um, you know, I, I, I asked God, I said, God, speak to me through Mary. And that uh, is a very interesting question for someone who's not Catholic. But um, I, I, I said, speak to me through Mary. I want to understand this. And it wasn't uh, maybe 30 minutes that I had this vision of Mary at the Nativity. And she was holding the baby Jesus. And she looked up at me. And she said, do you know what he came to do for you? And not the world, for you. It was very personal. And she said, do you want to hold him? And I said, yes, I, I do. And she handed me the baby Jesus. And I'm looking down at baby Jesus, knowing what he's come to do for me. So I'm going to let you in on a secret. I, I don't know who all knows this. You know, you mentioned that, you know, you've had this sort of 
conversion of sorts that hasn't yet even fully culminated and you come into, into full communion with the Catholic Church. And some people might be like, well, how are you involved with Catholic Radio? The secret is this. Uh, when I first reached out to Bill Levitt, I was not Catholic. I was in the process. <laughs> Bill knew that I was in the process. And Bill Levitt, seeing the raw material, uh, said, hey, I want you to be involved. Uh, I had no microphone access at that point, right? I was just doing little stuff on the side. Uh, but I am forever grateful at that olive branch that was extended to me when I was in that process. I mean, we, we tend to think of, of radio and apostolates as being like kind of like all these external sort of detached things that involve, you know, messages and, and, and uh, programs. But, but I can tell you that, that as I was in that process, being involved and brought along and editing Catholic Answers every night, <laughs> you know, uh, to, to, to rebroadcast it in the morning before there was any such thing as a Sunrise Morning Show, like, uh, just that olive branch, that relationship that was extended to me um, through Sacred Heart Radio. And this is an opportunity, I, I think this captures part of the ethos of Sacred Heart Radio, uh, is that we want to build a relationship. Uh, there, there's some you know, media that may be out there just preaching to the choir. And, you know, perhaps we preach to the choir a little bit here too. Uh, but we have an ability to build a relationship with someone who is trying to get from point A to point B, and they're maybe at point A, point one, right? <laughs> or A, point two, or A, point three. How do we continue to have that thing that can speak to them and say, well, maybe you're struggling now. Think about the th how many times you hear on Catholic Answers, they do their open forum for non-Catholics, and the lines are jammed, right? Uh, Joe Heschmeyer just did an open forum for people who are in RCIA, right? The questions that came in. We are walking with you. That was a powerful you. episode of Catholic Answers, We are answers walking too. with you uh, because we are, we are not even that many, far, many steps farther ahead on the path than, <laughs> than you all are, those of you who are— walking back maybe some of you've raised been raised catholic and some of these things are just like triggering memories of things that you heard in school whatever it happens to be we want to be there for you and i know we've kind of gone on and on about this but this is this to me is like the heart of it it's the heart of it um i can talk about like you know pie graphs and charts if you make me uh but i want to talk about the relationships i want to talk about the stories those are the things that remind me like what it's really about, like what it's really about. And it's about family. And uh, if you want to be part of that family, I mean, many of you are already part of this family. Some of you um, have been giving for years. Uh, some of you have maybe heard some of these impact stories and have thought, that's pretty cool that I've got access to this Catholic radio station, but you haven't really like given to be part of this family. Um, I would encourage you to give us a call. Make a donation. We're in our membership drive. It's the last day. We're trying to get ahead to the finish line and, and hit goals uh, because our relationship with the electric company also exists, even though the relationship we actually care about is the relationship with you. Uh, but we got to pay those bills. 513-731-7740. 513-731-7740. Give online at sacredheartradio.com. Venmo at Sacred Heart Radio. Some of you have been uh, very generous through Venmo. And we encourage you, if you can make that $100 gift, if you can make a $10 a month gift, if you can make a $25 one-time gift, maybe you've got the resources. Maybe you want to see another story. Maybe there's somebody in your family who sounds like a guy like Travis or a guy like me, right? A guy like any of us who are just looking for somebody to say the right thing to us in the right moment. Um, maybe you want your family member to tune in and hear Father Ro Father John Ricardo say the phrase, right, that changes everything for somebody. Uh, I would encourage you to give. Again, sacredheartradio.com is probably the easiest. Um, I don't know about anybody else. Do we have to hit a break? I might have to hit a break because my Kleenex supply I'm is actually just, out. like, weepy. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. have I mentioned that we love Travis around here? We do. I love you all too. Thank you. Uh, you know, if I could say one more thing, you know, uh, we talk about family a lot here. And um, it was a big revelation at a time when I didn't have a very good relationship with my family um, that I realized uh, through the Catholic Church, not only do I get God the Father, I have Jesus as my brother, but I also get a, a mother and Mary. And, and that's something that 
in Protestant faith, you you don't get, you don't get the full family, the holy family. Um, and and you know, since uh, me coming out of addiction, my mother and I have rekindled, and and we are on good terms again. But there was a time where we didn't talk at all, mm-hmm. and um, it was because of the graces that God gave me and the mending of the heart that I was able to get from uh, from accepting those roles, a mother, a father, a brother, a friend. A family, right? I mean, this family. is the body of Christ. God didn't just, like, isolate us out to, like, individual relationships, right? He put us in a church. He put us in a church. Um, I'm... I'm more grateful than I can say. So we are going to have to hit a break because like, like the, the waterworks are like totally going in the studio this hour. <laughs> uh, but uh, give us a call at 513-731-7740. Make this happen for somebody else. Make this happen for someone in your family. Make this happen for a stranger diver, driving down the road. Uh, make it happen for them. Uh, make a gift right now if you can. Uh, anything helps. It really does. Uh, we believe in this mission because... We've seen what it's done in our lives, in our families, uh, in our hearts. Um, Again, the number 513-731-7740, 513-731-7740, sacredheartradio.com. Give online. There are easy ways uh, to do that. The button's right at the top of the page or Venmo at Sacred Heart Radio. We got to hit a break. We got to gather ourselves. I'm going to splash water on our faces or something. (laughs) Go get a Coke. Back after this, it's half past the hour. Hi, I'm Anna Mitchell, MC for Heartbeats for Life 5K, sponsored by Cincinnati Right to Life, Saturday, April 20th at Lunkin Airport Playfield. It's a day of food, family, and fun to keep hearts beating in Ohio. Register at CincinnatiRightToLife.org. Central Fabricators, proud supporters of Sacred Heart Radio, custom builds and repairs corrosion-resistant storage tanks, reactors, and pressure vessels. These are used to manufacture liquids used in everyday products like health and beauty aids, pharmaceuticals, and food. Central Fabricators uses the latest in technology and modern equipment to deliver quality products, and big orders are not a problem. Central Fabricators, ASME certified, and on the web at centralfabricators.com. That's centralfabricators.com. Support for Sacred Heart Radio is from Twin Dental of Cincinnati. Since 1986, twin brothers, doctors David and Michael Rothen have been providing superior dental care in a relaxed and comfortable setting for the entire family. The twin dental doctors utilize advanced dentistry techniques from sedation to implants and the latest in cosmetic options to preserve and beautify smiles. Twin Dental, located just off the I-275 exit at Hamilton Avenue. For a complimentary evaluation, 513-825-6111 and online at twindental.com. Hi. This is John Kennedy, a State Farm agent and a proud supporter of Sacred Heart Radio. If you need life insurance, I can help process the best options for you and your family. You can reach me at 859-485-2000 or online at johnkennedyinsurance.com. Support for Sacred Heart Radio is from St. Michael's Rosaries and Religious Articles in beautiful Miamisburg. Unique rosaries including custom-made, one-of-a-kind rosaries and Catholic books and gifts for all occasions. Online at stmichaelscustomrosaries.com. That's stmichaelscustomrosaries.com. Support for Sacred Heart Radio is from Stegman Landscape. Serving the tri-state since 1979, Stegman Landscape can create a picture-perfect landscape all year long. From design, installation, and maintenance to retaining walls, patios, and outdoor fireplaces to enjoy any season, Stegman Landscape can do it all. Stegman Landscape, making the world more beautiful one yard at a time. 859-781-1562 and online at stegmanlandscape.com. At times, life is overwhelming, making it hard to find peace and know God's love. Take a step out of life's busyness and into God's presence for an eight-day, personally directed retreat at the Jesuit Spiritual Center. Enter into silence to pray, reflect, and rest. Daily conversations with the spiritual director invite you to explore your own story and connect it to the life of Christ. For more information or to register, call 513-248-3500. That's 513-248-3500. I'm Guy. I'm Mara. And I'm Patrick. And we're the Cagney family with Coldwell Banker Realty. We support Sacred Heart Radio. And we help buyers and sellers trying to find their dream homes in Ohio, Kentucky, Indiana, and Florida. 513-347-1888 to talk to the Cagney family. (laughs) 
513-731-7740. Give us a call here at Sacred Heart Radio and make a donation today to help keep us on the air. You can go online to sacredheartradio.com and click donate or via Venmo at Sacred Heart Radio. We are so grateful for any amount you can give. We are particularly asking for $10 a month that you uh, make as a persevering gift, an auto deduction from your credit card, perhaps. And if by the end of the day we had, well, I need to do the math, but at the beginning of the drive when we had $0 raised, uh, we needed a thousand people to make that $10 a month pledge and it would help us reach our $120,000 goal. Of course, we need far fewer than that now. We are at $54,370 raised. Thank you so much to everyone who has called in and uh, financially supported the work that we do here at Sacred Heart Radio. And we've still got our video guy. What? Do you have an official title, Travis? I guess it would be a video producer. Video guy. You don't like video guy? Video guy. Video yeah, guy. but you should know video by now producer. that your whatever your title is at Sacred Heart Radio covers about like 10% of what you actually do. Uh, so, uh, well, I mean, in any hospitality. event. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. He... You're actually also our, our North Pole correspondent because the only That's reason that right. we've been able to, we were able to get Santa on the show for our last pledge drive is because you know him. I, that's correct, yes. Yeah, so, it's a big deal. It's a big deal. You're um, also like a booker. <laughs> yeah, you, exactly. you helped us book Santa. Exactly, exactly. Well, Travis, you and I have the uh, Sacred Heart Radio programming schedule in front of us in our newsletter, of course, folks. If you uh, get the Sacred Heart Radio newsletter, it always has our program schedule on the back it's a great thing to leave at the back of church when you're done reading it so that somebody else might pick it up and be like huh, i'm kind of interested in listening to one of these programs and perhaps they tune in or use the qr code that you can find uh in several places in the newsletter oh um but i There's would one. uh like <clears throat> to go through this with you a little bit travis because you were before working here before you do, you you weren't a listener to Catholic I was Radio, not right? a listener to Catholic you were Radio. you were not aware I didn't even know there was Catholic Radio. you know we have that in common actually I only knew that Catholic Radio existed in Cincinnati maybe like a couple of months before I had my interview to start working here <laughs> so we we share that in common I had a, I had a week yeah, yeah, nice, yeah. nice. So you have since started tuning in. Uh, it's actually uh, 7.40 or 9.10, depending on where I'm driving through, Yeah, because I have to balance between the both. Uh, I used to have other Christian stations on my sta on my dial, but that's the only one that is on it now. Nice. I okay, so tell us a little bit about what you have learned from listening to Catholic Radio. Well, first and foremost, um, I've learned the, the quality of our guests are they're, they're genuine people. Um, for example, um, Dina Dwyer Owens. Yes. Um, I connected to her for some reason right away, and uh, just her, her segments uh, on the Sunrise Morning Show really stood out to me, to the point where I had to go uh, and watch the episode of Un Undercover Boss. And what really stood out to me about her is that what she says, she's genuine. They started out the episode with her at morning mass. Mm -hmm. They ended the episode with her at mass. Uh, so she's not just saying, I do these things. I, she practices these things. Mm -hmm. You know, um, programming like Catholic Answers Live, Call to Communion, uh, this is my afternoon. Like last night, we uh, got done around six o'clock. I was in the building to about seven. So I caught the end of uh, Catholic Answers Live last night. And one of the things that really stood out to me when I first uh, started understanding this Catholic stuff was uh, why are there more books in the Bible, in the Catholic Bible, than there are in the Protestant Bible? 
course, then I asked my Protestant friends, and they're like, well, that's because Catholics added books to the Bible. And they really just don't understand. Um, I had to do my own research, and I found out that, no, Martin Luther did uh, remove books. But last night, that was one of the questions on Catholic Answers Live, and they elaborated on, well, that's because the, the Martin Luther didn't part, like the point about purgatory or praying to the dead. Um, so there are reasons behind why Catholic radio is important. Yeah. People listen because we have the answers. We have the truth. Mm -hmm. It's out there. Um, so if you're not if you're not listening to these things, I strongly recommend uh, have them on. Have them in the background. Even when I'm working and doing editing and stuff, I always have it on the the speaker next to my desk. I always am listening to mm -hmm. our programming throughout the day. You know, if you are hungry for your faith, hungry for your faith, Sacred Heart Radio is one of the avenues that you can get to quench that hunger. If you're thirsty. There is ways to quench that. You know, um, God speaks to us in a number of ways. And a big way that he's speaking to me lately is through Catholic Radio. It's incredible. I love that you used the word quench, this <laughs> water water imagery, yes. because Bear Wozniak's on the line. Yeah. Oh, wait, there's the music. <laughs> this is like in a WWE match where somebody's giving like a speech in the middle of the ring and then somebody else is like open music comes up, bumper music comes up and they're like, mm -hmm. oh no, here comes the rock. <laughs> or in this case, here comes the bear. It's like somebody's real confident and he's coming down the, he's running down the platform carrying a folding chair. It's Bear Wozniak. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I'd be carrying you, Matt. Oh, see, so but you, actually, you know what? You'd be carrying Cindy, and you'd be riding a surfboard because you're a tandem oh, surfing champion. Oh, that's, that's so the actual sweet. Time. Yeah, that's so. That's so right. But like, <laughs> I'd be running down carrying a folding chair. Man, that's so funny. I love. I love what that previous uh, guest said. You know, I love Catholic radio because I listened to Christian radio back in the day today because I was so hungry for more of the Lord, but. It, the, all of the message were so convoluted and even contradictory, but with, with Catholic radio, you're getting uh, it, its truth, and you don't have to spend half your time discerning, well, is this right or is this wrong? Uh, it all just seems, it all, you just know it's right. You, can, you know it by what's being said, and you, and you know it because it's consistent with the teaching of the Church. That's so true, and uh, I have an example to share here in just a second. So 513-731-7740, the number to call if you appreciate that, right? You flip the, around the dial. There's other ways to have people who talk about God and, and mention faith, uh, but we've got, like, some anchored stuff here on Catholic Radio, and if you are grateful for that, there's some of you who are listening who are not even Catholic at the moment, right, who are still benefiting from this in some way. I'd encourage you to, 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 to bring those stories to the table uh, and to, to bring your participation to our membership drive. We're trying to raise money today. It's one of those few moments in the year where we do try and raise money, but 513-731-7740. If you benefit, consider giving maybe a hundred dollars one time, maybe $10 a month. Maybe you can give more. Maybe you can't give as much, but please do give sacredheartradio.com. Again, sacredheartradio.com. You can Venmo us at sacred heart radio and Bear, I got a story to tell you, and I'm curious about your thoughts on this. Uh, so I have a Protestant pastor friend who is now a Catholic and uh, active in the church and teaching RCIA and all that fun stuff. But when he was a new convert, before he actually became a pastor, he was working at a Christian radio station. And uh, he was obsessed with, like, the Bible Answer Man and some of these other programs. And he'd be running these programs from the studio of his Christian radio station. And you hear on, at 2 p.m. on a Thursday, one of these guys say one thing, and at like 5 p.m. that day, hear another guy say something that completely contradicted it. <laughs> and, so, yeah. and then the other option was just playing music, which often didn't say necessarily a whole lot of anything other than being positive and encouraging. And so when he found Catholic Radio, he was like, finally, a consistent message all 24 hours of the day, all seven days of the week. People can tune in 
and hear us on the Sunrise Morning Show on a weekday morning, and then if they tune into you on a Saturday night, Barrett, they're not going to hear something that contradicts, right? They're gonna, we're on the it's, same message. We're, we're on the same wavelength here, to borrow a pun from your industry. Yeah, <laughs> I always love talking to you. Yeah, you know, I, I, I know the NRB, the National Religious Broadcasting uh, uh, Organization, which is a great organization. And, and let's face it, Christian Radio does so much good. Uh, the Protestant Christian Radio does so much good. But I went to their big convention uh, at once, and it's a cacophony when you walk through their big exhibit room. It's like different. It's like there's this. It's not homogenous. That's I don't know how to say it. There's just confusion. The, the, the conflicting, the conflicting uh, uh, belief systems and theologies. They and, agree on Jesus, but they don't agree thing. on what he means, right? <laughs> right, right. You know, and that, we do have that in common with them, is that yeah. we have Jesus in common with them. But we're just so fortunate, because not only do we have this consistency in our faith that's been tested and sifted through not just the, you know, um, the American Western, you know, the, the American culture, but through 2,000 years, uh, and through every 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 uh, era and every every country, what works here in the United States works in Nigeria, works in China. The, our faith is, has been tested, it's been sifted, and it's consistent. And praise God, you know, because you know, the, the, when I returned to the Catholic Church, I loved. Um, I came back uh, because of uh, the New Catechism, because it wasn't out at, by the time I was leaving; it was just coming out, and I found this this beautiful uh, expression of faith that um, it all made sense. If that's true, then this is true, then this is true, and this is true. And that goes back to the writings of the early church fathers and, uh, and our saints and our popes, and it goes back to Aristotle, you know, it goes back to Augustine, it goes back to Plato. I mean, all the, the best of, 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 of the Greek thinking is sifted and, 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 and synthesized into an, uh, helping us have a more deep grasp of our faith. Uh, but Catholic radio is 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 basically where I went to school. Just just there's a verse that says, "May you be washed in the form of words." And sometimes I think mm. our brains need a good scrubbing, you know. And uh, <laughs> and uh, Catholic radio links all the synapses so things get firing and truth, 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 and it's healthy for your mind. You know, I'm so glad you brought that that up. That idea of it being the same everywhere, right? It's if it's true, it's going to be true here. It's going to be true in Nigeria. It's going to be true in China. It's going to be true going back centuries. It's going to be true centuries from now. It's going to be all those things. And we do get a chance to test that theory a little bit here on the Sunrise Morning Show uh, and on Sacred Heart Radio in general. But I am, my, my direct experience is with the Sunrise Morning Show. We get to test on a weekly basis with you if it's true in Hawaii but also true in Florida depending on where you are, or true in the middle of the Caribbean, or wherever in the world you are. We get to test if it's true in all those places. We get to test if it's true with Joseph Pierce, who came from England but is in South Carolina now. We get to test if it's true with Father Robert Nixon, who's calling us from Australia. We get to test if it's yeah. true still with Liz Lev in Rome, with Rita Heikenfeld on the east side of Cincinnati, uh, you know, like with John Bergsma up in Steubenville. With, we get to test it with all it, – we are one church. And sometimes, man, I don't, I mean, it, you, you get to test it when you do your long ride home stuff. You get to test it from one end of the United States of America to the other end. Like, yeah. this is the stuff, and we need our community. We need our truth. Um, uh, we can need I, it, right? We need the anchor. Can I say something? Can I say something, Matt? Um, I'm just going to say it like it is, like I tend to do. I'm also a CPA. And I, it's taxes. Oh, no. So you see how and much I, people actually give to these things. I'm going to tell you, man, that the Protestants. Most of them are giving 10%, and I'm going to tell you, most of the Catholics put money, give like they're putting money, uh, uh, like a tip, like when they're doing someone a favor when they put their tip money in the collection box. And and uh, one thing you know is that when you give to uh, Christian radio, especially if you can give monthly and it becomes just part of the rhythm of your life, you're giving to something that you know where the money's going, you know how it's being used, and it's going directly. The people that are involved in Catholic Radio are, are doers. You know, the, most of them have, before they started the radio station, by the way, radio stations take boots on the ground. It takes an, antennas. It takes, it's different than TV being beamed in from a, from a satellite, you know, to a cable TV uh, network like EWTN TV. 
this is different. It takes boots on the ground. And when you walk into a, 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 a EW channel or a Catholic radio station, um, most of the people in there had nothing to do with the radio. Even the people who who, who, who helped organize it and buy the, the the antennas and everything had nothing to do with Catholic radio. It's just like the Holy Spirit tapped them on the shoulder and say, "Hey, you got a minute." And, and, and so that so, so many of them have given up so many careers and everything to, to make this happen. So if you feel the Holy Spirit tapping you on the shoulder and say, hey, have you got a few more dollars? Um, give. My dad, you know, he was a Catholic deacon, and he used to say, don't give till it hurts. Give till it feels good. Hmm. Give a little bit more, and God will bless you. God will bless you. Um, uh, we need Catholic radio. And, and, and when, you, when, you, when you support Catholic radio, it's, it's, it's teaching for those for the faithful. It's it's evangelization for those who who's uh, who who are looking for an answer, and it's hope for those are who are uh, suffering in this world, which is a which is a world where we need hope. And so, please support Catholic Radio. Please do it consistently on a monthly basis, and give until it feels good. All right, Bear. I'm going to tap into your experience as a CPA for a minute. Not that I'm going to ask you to give financial advice to everybody listening right now, but you're a CPA and you've been doing this for a while. I know everybody on here knows you as a motorcycle rider and a tandem surfer and a cliff diver and a person who killed a shark with his bare hands in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, you know, during a hurricane. Like, I don't know. Well, I don't know what people know you as. Uh, I think you got your name as Bear because you killed yourself a bear when you were only three, like Davy Crockett. But I want to. I want to tap into your experience as a CPA. You mentioned you do these, you do people's finances. Uh, yeah. You ever get embarrassed when you see like evangelicals come in and they show what they've given to their churches, to their ministries, and then you see a Catholic person's tax return and you're like, man, you didn't get oh, much it's of embarrassing. Anything. I mean, it, it's very rare that I'll see a Catholic come in who's giving, but I'll tell you, I've had my firm for many years, many, many years. I don't even know how many. Uh, over 30 years, 35. Some of my clients have been with me 35 years, and I've seen the faithful givers. And uh, one man in particular, I think, of how in good times and bad, he always consistently gives. And I go, you know, David, if you if if, if you if you calculated this 10 percent based on the net mark, the net profit backing into the funny money of depreciation, actually, you would kind of this is what would be the number. You're really giving them twice as much as that 10 percent. He said, I don't care, brother. You just keep giving the ten percent. God has been faithful to me, and this is the least I can do for Him. So, um, yeah. Do you think people being, worry about uh, that? You think that being, that's part of why some people don't give as much as they as they could be given is because they're like, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what you know what's going to if the economic downturn or upturn is going to happen over the course of the next election cycle. You know, I don't know right. what the gas prices are. Do you think that we let those fears control? I mean, you're the one who's looking at the numbers of how people think about this <laughs> this stuff. So I well, I wonder what you notice. It's part of asceticism. It's part of being ascetic. It's the discipline. Uh, it's the discipline in life that God calls us to. But you know, you know, it's tough when you have a when you have a ministry. And you don't know, you know, what the tide's going to roll in the next month when it rises and falls or people don't, you know, give consistently. You know, it's so funny how I think it's during the summer months, I think it's during the summer, summer months the giving drops. It's very hard. And so I just encourage people, you know, people will give because of what they're getting out of Catholic Radio. That's kind of like the wrong reason. It's actually you should give because of what Catholic Radio, because of what the Lord is doing for others through Catholic Radio. You know, uh uh, not not giving because oh sunrise morning show means so much to me. Give because it means so much to to others, because you guys are 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 you know, you're you're the friend of God. You're 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 you're, you're sharing God's message with the world. Don't <laughs> please everybody. Consider um, just pre- prayerfully consider. And you know, like so many when you listen to when you listen to to Protestant stations, we love our Protestant brothers and sisters. But this uh, give and plant it, and it'll come back to you a hundredfold. Uh, it doesn't work in Nigeria so much, you know, or, or in China when you're in change, you know. Give because the Lord, uh, because you love the Lord, and you, and you yeah. want to see the gospel go forth. Just give yeah. for the, just don't give for what you get out of it. Give for what what others will receive out, out right. of your gift. All right, Bear, I got one last question for you, and then I'll let you go. Uh, so. Anybody who's got an accountant has got more money than the average "quote unquote" bear, right? Uh, a lot of people are doing TurboTax <laughs> and downloading it because they're trying to figure out how to get away for, with with calling people like you, right? There, people are cutting corners or whatever. Often, people who have accountants have CPAs. 
uh, are doing so because they got a they got a they got a chunk of money to manage and they want to make sure they're doing it right and they have more often, I mean not always but often, than uh, regular old folks who don't want to invest in what it costs to pay an accountant. So yeah, let's say there's somebody out there listening who's got a CPA, who's got somebody managing their money, who can afford to hire somebody to look at their money. If that's such a th- – it's a, it's a concept that's mind-blowing. Hire somebody to look at your money. What would you say to a person like that who's listening right now uh, to, to really think about what the Lord might be calling to, them to do with what they've been blessed with uh, well, let's and talk to ask about, them to be generous? You know what's so hard is like, you know, like I have my own ministry. The hardest thing in the world is to ask for people to give, you know, Oh, it's uh, worst. We hate but, it. We dread it every year, right? <laughs> it's hard. It's re- yeah. I mean, I, it's easy for me to ask people to give to your ministry. That's easy. Oh, I could never. I mean, but it's I easy for me to ask some, for people to give people, to you, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very hard. Like I, in surfing, I promote a lot of other servers. It's hard to promote myself. But if you if you're in a position to give to give a legacy, a gift, uh, to give a substantial amount, um, don't hesitate to do that. Uh, the Lord has given you stewardship. It's not that you're lucky, uh, and it isn't that you, and it isn't. Uh, it's because you worked really hard, but also God gave you gifts and abilities to work hard. It's also because um, God has blessed you. You're like a big oak tree, and underneath you, many, many, maybe employees have flourished underneath the shade of your tree. Uh, but God has blessed you to be a stewardship of his wealth. It certainly isn't yours. I remember my dad once was sta- standing on a, on a hillside. He was a great uh, speaker. And, uh, and there was a man standing next to him who barely knew my dad. He goes, you know, my dad, and they're looking over a huge ranch. And he said, you know, my dad, my dad owns all, the, all that cattle. And he goes, well, I didn't know your dad was a rancher. He goes, no, all the cattle on a thousand hills belong to my dad. And the guy still didn't get it that, uh, that my yes, dad was talking, he's, was he's talking about. He's quoting the songs. Yeah. Yeah. And so, so, and so you're, the wealth that God has given you, it isn't just because you're lucky. Dude, you have worked so hard. You've taken so much risks. You've had sleepless nights, uh, it, it, you know, it, it, uh, in the pursuit of God's will within your career. I mean, like when I sat for the CPA exam, I felt – the same grace and power of the Holy Spirit as I do when I go to Mass sometimes. You know, I just, I know I'm in God's will. But you're, you, you, you've taken big risks. There's, there's nights when your eyes pop open at 1 in the morning like, oh, no, I better get up and save my company because I've got employees that are counting on me. Uh, you've worked really hard. But there's a certain genius that God's given you, a certain uh, gifting that God's given you that's also given you the, the place to be able to build this sort of business. And so, um, it, it, but, it, but it's God's, and God has given this to you uh, so, you can be a, so that you can be a good steward. In Hawaii, we call it kuleana. It's stewardship. It's responsibility. It's more than that. It's actually you. It's your personal telos, and God knows that. So it's the, Lord, it's the Lord's call on your life, and not just to be, uh, to, and it's good that you, can, that you have a nice home, and it's good that you're taking care of your children, uh, but also uh, overflow. Let the give the overflow to to uh, to a cause like this. It's one of the reasons why God has blessed you so much. And well, like Bear, I say, my dad used to say, "Give tell it feels good." Well, Bear, there's somebody listening right now who needed to hear those exact words. <laughs> Maybe they've been blessed and they've been trying to figure out what am I supposed to do uh, with this wealth? Should I hang on to it? Oh, you know, yeah. All that stuff. Yeah. And so I'm so grateful for your perspective on this. Again, we're trying to fulfill our membership drive and the number to call if you want to give to support Catholic Radio with the means God has given you. God has given you unique situations, unique privileges, unique opportunities, mm. and a unique uh, ability to be generous. Uh, give us a call at 513-731-7740. Again, 513-731-7740. And give whatever God has laid on your heart to give. Uh, you can also give at sacredheartradio.com. You can even give through Venmo. Uh, you can find us at Sacred Heart Radio. Again, sacredheartradio.com is probably the easiest, but we got people on the phones. Again, 513-731-7740. Bear, you may have touched a nerve this morning. I know you touched hey. one in me like... I hang on to my stuff. I need to hang yeah, on to my yeah. stuff a little bit less. We love you. We love Paul. We love Anna. We love, we love Paul's dad. Yeah, that's Paul's right. right now. Call and talk to Paul's dad. <laughs> that's awesome. Bear Wozniak, have a great day.
Okay, ahujo and aloha. All right. May God bless you and keep you and grant you his peace. Does your parish have a spiritual event planned? Sacred Heart Radio can help get the word out. Whether it's a parish mission, 40 hours of adoration, or a speaker you've invited, just visit sacredheartradio.com and click on events and give us the facts to put on the radio and on our events calendar. One of the benefits of having a local Catholic station is to inform our listeners of the many spiritual activities happening throughout the tri-state. So to submit a spiritual event planned for your parish, just visit sacredheartradio.com and click on events. Support for Sacred Art Radio is from Lefke Tree Experts. For residential or commercial tree pruning and removal, brush clearing, storm cleanup, and more, Lefke Tree Experts, 513-325-1783, 513-325-1783. Support comes from On a Mission to Love. For books, handcrafted gifts for baptism, communion, confirmation, wedding, birthdays, and more, all deeply based in the rosary and devotion to our Holy Mother. On a mission to love.com. That's on a mission to love.com. A wedding is a day, a marriage is a lifetime. Catholic Engaged Encounter Weekends are a marriage preparation program led by married couples and a priest or deacon. This is time for a couple to learn about each other and their upcoming marriage. Based on communication, intimacy, and the family they grew up in. Find out more at Cincinnati Covington.engagedencounter.com. That's Cincinnati-Covington.EngagedEncounter.com. At Carmel Manor, the difference is love. But do you know you can experience this difference by selecting a room in our economical personal care neighborhood? We have a small number of immediate vacancies on personal care steps from our peaceful chapel where you can attend Mass six days a week and experience all the joys of Carmelite Catholic spirituality. Contact us at 859-781-5111 for more information about this inexpensive alternative to traditional 